I, l- I love the premise of the show. Smart people talking about dumb shit. I think, I think it's dumb people talking about, about smart, smart shit. shit. Oh, we go where we're not supposed to go, baby. The Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Yup, Charlemagne the God. Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, back for another week of Brilliant Idiotness. We have our guy here. You hear his voice at the beginning of every Brilliant Idiots yeah, intro. Yeah, just learned that. You know, when he says, um, I like the premise of this show. I can't remember now, and I hear it all the time. What is it? I like the premise of this show. Smart people talking about dumb shit. Yes, and stuff we, like yeah, that. Yeah, we say dumb people talking about smart shit. Yeah. Humble the poet with his hair. Yeah. yeah. Humble's got a new book out called uh, How to Be Love. We're going to talk about today. But first of all, how, how's everybody feeling, man? How you feeling? How you, what's, your, what's your disease of the week, Charlotte? What, what do you got? <laughs> we should go through today? Charlotte's disease of the week. I'm still wearing the heart monitor. Okay, so so right now you said before the pod you have a heart monitor on. Yeah, I wear the heart monitor, and I got to carry this around. It's like a little phone, and you tap it, and it says <laughs> monitoring. And then you tap for details, uh-huh. and it tells you successfully monitoring your cardiac information. I just got to wear it for another. And why? Week. Why? Why? Why do you think it's, something is wrong with you? I don't know. I just been hearing about everybody having heart attacks, and <laughs> so you think me as a professional athlete that was going as hard as he possibly could for thirty minutes in a game and pushing his body to the ultimate maximum point that it could handle is going through the same as you that sits down for a living. To that point, it wasn't just him. I had a, I had a, I had a homegirl who died of some, uh, a, a heart attack, uh, a homeboy recently. Mm-hmm. And the thing with the football player, when I heard about the hit, like, I got to hear these things. Yep. I have to hear, oh, it was a hit. Yep. You know, or, oh, this person was overweight. Because it wasn't just uh, a brother from the Bills who there had was that. another gentleman. The guy from the Jaguars, he died. Yep. You know, he was 38 years old, you know? So it's just like, yeah, and it was, but I, I was wearing a monitor before all that. I, I, I've been wearing a monitor for like two weeks. I would have been done if I didn't go to Ghana. Oh. But it didn't work in Ghana because it didn't have no signal on the um on the phone. That's fucked up. Yeah, so same old thing. But know. what do you think it is? You think it's Trump's vaccine? It's not- <laughs> do, you think, do you think it's Trump's vaccine? <laughs> is that what you think it is? Yo, you know what's so funny? Yo. Yo, Diamond died yesterday from Diamond and Silk. No. Come on, Schultz. I, did you get a notification or something? <laughs> yeah, was, yeah, I didn't know. Why am I supposed to know? It was, it was on Truth Social. Oh, I'm sorry, Charlotte. I wasn't checking my Truth Social exactly. account. Yes, you're sir. On <laughs> of course, you I'm verified. verified. <laughs> I'm one of the on ambassadors of Truth Social. <laughs> I didn't know she died. What'd she die from? I don't know, but she was 51 years old. And what's wild about it is I saw people in the comments saying a lot of suddenly dies, all of us. But they're doing that. All the people that are against the vaccine. Yep. They always say, oh, another suddenly dies. But I'm like, another know, sudden death, another sudden death. Yeah, what the fuck yeah. was I saying? You you were speaking in the most incoherent way I've ever heard you speak <laughs> in my entire life. <laughs> and the funny thing is, we let you go the first time and then you repeated the exact same thing the second time. But no, time. that's how they were saying it. Yeah, yeah, the headlines, yeah. be Check like, your heart monitor when you were trying to put together that sentence. <laughs> Yo, your Which heart be skyrocketing. <laughs> <laughs> but no, because people were saying in the headlines, like, Diamond suddenly dies. So yeah. That's how they were saying it. They'd be, yeah. you know, suddenly die. But the crazy part is, People were saying that, but they don't realize that they weren't they weren't for the vaccine. They weren't for the vaccine. Diamond and Silk weren't for the vaccine. But that's Trump's vaccine, though. It's definitely Trump's it's vaccine. It's Biden's booster, but it's Trump's vaccine. No, it's definitely Trump's vaccine. So it is a, what is it called? A unilateral approach? A bipartisan approach. Bipartisan. I thought it was non-binary. Yeah. They reached, reached it isn't. across the it aisle. Isn't? It's non-binary. They literally reached across the aisle. Okay. It's binary, yeah. It's yeah. Both. It's both. Yeah. Um, but you didn't tell us how you, I want to get to everybody. How are you? How are you? Heavy? I'm concerned about you, bro. <laughs> no, because for real, you were walking a little different. I think, I, yo, I think honestly, my knee is hurting a little bit. Knee, I worked out yesterday. You did. I, when you walked in, I was like, yo, is his knee hurting a little bit? <laughs> also, seriously, I'm going to put all the ailments on you right now. Because once you say Charlotte could Don't have something, on me. once you no. say Charlotte could nope. have something, he no. starts manifesting it. Remember when he turned himself into a wolf? Now he's turning himself <laughs> into a fucking victim of every no. disease that exists in no to man oh, right now. That's real. Why don't you turn yourself into healthy? I'm trying. That's why I need to know nothing. I need to know everything's good. Mm-hmm. And then once I know everything's good, that's why the doctor keeps telling you, like, he's like, you just got to say everything's good. Exactly. Manifest that it. Big, that you made yourself difference. a wolf, bro. You made yourself fly. You can't make I don't yourself think anything better. wrong with me. I'm just 44. I'm just making sure everything's ticking the way. Just go, my heart's talking. good. It is. Oh, it Re- is. Repeat after me. My heart's good. I have pride. Well, actually, it's stable. <laughs> I have power. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a badass mother that don't take shit from nobody. Go on, bro. You need Jamaican confidence to get over these issues that you got, man. But they mean lying. I don't eat pussy. Yeah. 
You lying ass Jamaican. Yeah, you eat some dumpling. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, humble the poet? I'm good, man. Humble, can you help Charlotte with his made up diseases and shit that he got <laughs> yo it's true though the, the, the stories you tell yourself impact how you feel 100% oh, I agree that's my, my my therapist I got a new therapist my therapist tells me all the time anxiety and faith can't coexist and he was like whenever you start to feel anxious tell yourself your own hero story Ooh. like literally tell yourself your own hero story he was like yo you know what you've been through you know what you've overcome you know how you've gotten to where you are tell yourself that story constantly and mm -hmm. not just about yourself talk about you know how you help others and it's like you know and i i, I it, it tended to work it tended, did i ever tell you i told y'all that story when i was in the doctor's office and the doctor was checking my blood pressure and it was high one second and he's like it's, it's gotta be yeah like, it's, it's, it's it's no way and then he was like sit down and he was like do the meditation he was like do the meditation you know think about your upcoming vacation all of that stuff like that and so i did it and literally within seconds he was like it's you're fine your blood pressure is fine. Have you done ice bath yet? No, I'm sorry. Oh, God, this. don't get me started with this ice bath. You did it, shows? I'm not doing this ice bath. Oh, you haven't? <laughs> I'm not doing this I'm scared ice of bath. that shit. I, I'm, I'm not, it's not even scared. I've done it, but like, it's like the new trend. Like, everybody's like getting cold in the morning and all this kind of yeah. shit. And, we, and I love Dr. Huberman. We had him on the podcast. He's a fucking great guy. Know, like Wim Hof. Well, Wim Hof also, but Huberman has been like, uh, Wim Hof is like the vagabond in the mountains. And then Dr. Huberman is like the guy who's like, oh, science does believe this works. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Wim, does, Wim doesn't talk about the science. Wim, yeah, Wim, Wim is, is just like, like, you got a broken leg, go on the ice. Exactly. going to fix it. Yeah. What? And then, his, and then his son's going to be like, no, dad, it won't fix your leg. But if you have anxiety, it'll yes, help it will fix that. that. Yeah. Why though? Because it just takes your mind off the... Yeah, the idea is put yourself in a really difficult situation and become comfortable in difficult yeah. situations. And then when you have those difficult situations in life, you'll be comfortable for That's them. not how my mind works. My mind works like, my God, my dick is going to get so shrinkage in this shit that it'll never grow back the way it was. Really? Yeah, you go through that. You go through all of that. And then nothing else in your day will be as stressful. Because you you did that. That's the idea. It just when builds your resilience. Back, though? You, well, no, but you're at peace with that. that no, point. I'm not going to be at peace with losing it just off my dick. I Why, dude? To lose. You're 53. You got four <laughs> kids. Like, you don't need no dick no more, bro. It worked. It figured it out. You're good. I saw you doing something like that once, but it wasn't the ice bath. It was us, uh, yeah. I, I, I trained with Wim Hof. I went to Poland. I did it with uh, Lewis House. He invited Boom, me. I, that's what I saw. Yeah, yeah okay, I went okay. with him. And then I thought it was dope. Like, well, it was super dope from that. But it's also just like, in terms of like, that's the hardest thing you'll ever do. You do that, you know, you you freak the fuck out and everything. And then after that, like, whatever else stresses you out won't stress you out as much. So why is Kevin Hart doing that shit all the time? With the everybody, cold yeah, shit? yeah, everybody's doing the, the cold, the ice cold. I don't know. I don't know if there's actual healing. I feel like it's the same thing as, like, skydiving. It's like, you survive and you're like, oh, okay, I'm alive. That's what I'm saying. I, I, when I hear you talk about it, I'm like, well, that's bungee jumping. It's yeah, and like, it forces I, you to breathe. That's what it does. What I will say about the ice bath shit is like it's no coincidence to me that like nobody in New York does it because it's freezing it. Nah, not because it's cold. It's like I'm gonna experience some terrifying shit the second I walk out you my might fucking get door. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Rats. I got a homeless person eating a cat <laughs> when I walk outside <laughs> the house, like, and I'm immediately shocked, and then I gotta calm myself down. Like, I get on the subway, the doors close, and a guy takes his fucking dick out, starts peeing. What race I got, is the I'm, homeless I'm, person? I'm really excited. What race is the homeless person now? Puerto Rican, hundred percent. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah Puerto Rican, hundred okay, percent. Okay. Yeah, there's no other one that would eat the cat okay, at all. Okay, it would be Puerto okay. Rican, hundred percent. Okay, that's Joe it. Joe wasn't Jamaican eating the cat. Nah, it does. <laughs> Why'd you make it so afraid of pussy, man? That's a lie. They say that shit to get more pussy. But apparently they don't do ice bath. They start eating pussy. That's what they do in Jamaica. If you start your morning by eating some that's pussy, the dangerous that's the most do. scary thing. By the way, that's why I don't believe the ice bath shit. You're not going to make me believe that an ice bath is the most difficult thing you're going to do ever in your life. Yeah, because you know you could get right out. It's up to you. If they was holding you in it, yeah, but you still feel like you're going to die while you're in it. Have you ever it's given like birth? working out. You voluntarily work out, yeah. rip muscles, make yourself uncomfortable. And then when you got to like help somebody move a couch, you can't. But oh. the idea is like you're putting yourself in this situation that's uncomfortable. And, I, and I, what I would say is like New Yorkers, we exist in discomfort. I agree. Like, yeah. And I, I yeah, we, this is the part of life. Like when I walk down the street to this day, Every person I see walking down the street, I'm doing a calculation if they're going to punch me in my face. Word up. <laughs> that's no, a real word thing. Up, word and, up. and I'm just comfortable word with up. it. Yeah. And, that, and what that's doing is just keeping you present. So you're not zoned yeah. out. You're not listening to your headphones. You're not focusing on other stuff. You're in the present, which yeah. keeps you more at peace. Yeah. Right? So it's the resilience that you get. Yeah. Voluntarily being uncomfortable 
which is what somebody does by voluntarily living in New York. You right. That's what it is. <laughs> but I will say this. When I was in Miami and I didn't think of nobody punching my mind fit, my life was so much better, bro. Man. <laughs> yo, yo, this yo, ice yo, bath shit. New York yo. is ice bath, bro. No. But then you turn soft. Say again? But then I got soft. <laughs> this kept me hard. So what about a woman? A woman that gives birth. I'm sure giving birth is way more difficult than an ice bath. How do we know that, bro? They've been doing that shit for millions of years. The, the female <laughs> lobby is trying to convince Man. us that it's hard to give birth. You know what I mean? Like, how hard can it be, bro? Come on, yo. What if you give birth in the ice bath? That could work. A little ice cold, baby. That could work. <laughs> hey, that could work. For real. You know what I mean? For real. That could, that, I, that, that's a good idea. They ain't never tried that. Oh, man. Um... <laughs> <laughs> a lot of stuff going on this week that we're going to get into. We're going to talk about Humble's book. It's called How to Be Love. Uh, what is, what, first of all, tell us what the title of the book means, Humble. Because it says it's the last book on love you'll ever need. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. I put in the work. Yeah. So it's just everybody wants love. And the secret to having love is to be love. Just view love as a verb. Oh, I agree with that. Yeah. Like, like, because that's why I always say. Explain that to me because I'm, I'm dumb. Explain that. Well, I, I always say your first, last, and self-love. Your first, last, and best love will be self-love. Yeah. And that's just how I carry myself. And that's what I, I feel like that about myself. So I project that on others. Mm. I'm always approach situations with love. Mm. And I think it's also like everybody wants love and they don't recognize what love actually is anymore. Okay. So ironically, I use the analogy of Canal Street love, where it's like attention, affection, clout, success, power, control. These all feel like love, but they're not. You know, they're like Canal Street version, bootleg love. Yeah. And actual love comes internally and it's like anybody you love in your life whether it's a spouse a partner a parent they're showing you what love is and you're yeah. creating a pathway of love with them versus they're giving you love so i think when people most everything everybody does is to get these feelings of love but most of those things aren't love mm. so just being like yo you're a source of it create it and share it and then you'll experience more of it versus trying to make a lot of money trying to look fly trying to be perfect trying because mm. love isn't something you earn i think people think they got to earn love or be worthy because the feelings are similar yeah yeah but those yeah. feelings are temporary but all those temporary. other things you get them temporary where yeah. actual love is just peace actual love is clearing out the garbage mm. and what's left is love mm. you don't got to do nothing to get love yeah I, lo I love what you said about love not being something that you earn and it makes me wonder um you know I mean, it makes me think that you can't find love in no nothing else. Like nobody can give you love. Yeah, can I mean, I'm asking. I don't. Know. I don't. I don't think anybody can give you love. I think people can show you where love is. Yeah. So the way I look at it is like, if it's a breeze, your work is to open the sail. It's not like I need to find love. I need someone to give me love. Yeah. So it's like, you know, <clears throat> some relationships are easier with that. With you know, with a parent or something like that, it's easier to establish that relationship and see where the love's at. And then also with like a baby or something, you don't even have interactions with the baby, but you love the baby. But then with people, you guys do a little bit more work to establish it with time and then being vulnerable, yeah, building yeah, connection, yeah. being vulnerable, that like creates a path. And I think I look at it that way now, creating pathways of love with people. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And with things too, like when we were having that earlier conversation about craft yeah. and all of that, like that's, it's the same idea. Like the only way, you know, you get great at your craft is through the boring, unsexy work. It's shooting in the gym yep. where no one's watching. Yeah. That's the same thing in a healthy, romantic relationship. It's the unsexy stuff that's happening behind the scenes, paying the bills, negotiating dates, vacations, all this stuff. Nipping another while they taking the shit. Doing all of that. Yeah, all that unsexy kiss, stuff. They just farted. Yeah. No, all of that no. stuff. Yeah, all that yeah. like stuff that's not hashtag couples goals and all that. So yeah. I think from that standpoint, it's just looking at that and then realizing that a lot of our ideas around love come from like what we see on tv or like bobby whitney ross rachel all these like highs and lows you know and i think we're a healthy relationship any capacity is would it make for good tv mm. and i think we don't realize how much it like disney and porn and like rom-coms tell us what we think it is and like there's studies that say there's no spark like the spark you shouldn't depend on the spark when it comes to like romantic relationships mm. so it's like a study of like <clears throat> i think it's 1100 couples that have been together for more than 10 years, less than 8% of them talk about ever feeling a spark. And yeah, then, I feel that spark, bro. Yeah. I think that spark there. No, that spark when you first meet somebody. Now, I still got that spark after 24 well, you, years. I you, think I actually got it more now. Like, really? You, yeah, you working probably, on that spark or is that spark? No, that spark, spark there. I mean, I mean, to me, it's like, you know, the spark grows the more you and a person grow together because, I mean, I've been, I've been blessed to be with the same person for 
24 years, it'll be 25 years yeah. this year. So we've seen each other through so many different stages. We saw each other when we was teenagers. We saw each other when she was in college and I was first starting in radio. Like, you know, we've literally grown together. We've been evicted together. We got kids now. Like we start with one. Now we got four. Like, so it's just like, yo, the more I see her in different capacities, the more she sees me in different capacities, the more we evolve as people. It's just like, man, more and more, I feel like the fire grow but that's a fire and that's also a bond that you guys are like working on mm -hmm. you know through your highs and lows when i'm talking about spark it's like that butterflies in your stomach when you first meet somebody still get it bro you get that you got that from day one up to now hell yeah i mean and that's beautiful to hear i think butterflies change i think that the butterflies in the beginning are are ones of uh not um, not knowing the outcome the excitement of what if, where this could go, what will happen with the night. Mm -hmm. Do you really like something? And I think that those transition to, for me at least, gratitude. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like my my wife put a new toothbrush in the place where our toothbrushes go. And this morning I was like, God damn, what a fucking great woman. Now, she put her new toothbrush as well, but she's thinking when she gets toothbrushes, she's like, I need to get two because this motherfucker ain't going to ever change out his toothbrush. And she might be doing it completely selfishly. I'm tired of him brushing his teeth with the most dirty ass fucking toothbrush and I got to kiss this guy. But going in the morning and seeing a brand new toothbrush and knowing that she thought about me, she cared about me and that that was there. I was like, man, I feel like the luckiest motherfucker. That's what Schultz just said is the key to it all. It's and gratitude. you guys are describing peace. And that's yeah, what love it's is. Great. It's that. I'm, I felt guilty. I was like, I need to buy her something. Like, <laughs> I, I, I literally felt, I was walking around today. I was like, I, she need a gift or some shit because I'm so horrible at but love. That's gratitude. <laughs> that's gratitude. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's, gratitude. And that's beautiful. Yeah. You're so thankful for her that you just want to continue to do stuff for her and, and pour into her. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Gratitude. I have more and more gratitude for my wife yeah. every day. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that exciting spark, which is probably trauma because this person reminds you of like your parents. Ah. And people lean towards what's familiar over what's healthy. So, yeah. like, you know, there's something exciting about this person and you're drawn to them. You don't know what that is. Yeah. That's what a lot. So a lot of people pass up. Jesus. There's that book attached that says, we believe in soulmates, but we believe you probably passed on your soulmate because you thought they were boring. Oh, wow. Uh, it's hard to have a spark when you this the woman reminds you of your mom. You're not trying yeah. to fuck your mom. No, yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people are because your parents are, your parents are the first example whoever raised you is your first example of love true right yeah right. and then you pick what's familiar so when you're when you're a kid and you have a developing brain what ends up happening is you internalize everything so let's uh -huh. say you, your, your parents have a bad day at work or whatever and then they come home they take it out on you you're a kid you don't have the context you think it's your fault so you make adjustments accordingly and then that's where people learn this idea that i have to earn love i have to uh -huh. earn my parents love i have to be something and then you don't update that when you become an adult so then you're like okay cool i have to earn my mom's love I'm going to, I, I'm more attracted to the girl that makes me work for it mm. versus the girl that's replying to my text, yeah. making it easy, not canceling plans. Okay, she, she, that's boring. I don't want that. I want that girl that's making me chase her. And then that's how it manifests. Like the movie It showed that really well. The new It, they showed when the kids grew up, mm -hmm. all of them married their parents. Clowns? Uh, oh, <laughs> sorry. Like the, the, the little boy had a helicopter mom that just always hovered over him. Yeah. He married a woman like, that always yeah. hovered over him. The girl had an abusive father. She married an abusive dude. Because it's like, you stick to what's familiar. Yo, that's so ill you say that. Because for me, I, and I, I love my pops, but I wanted to be the exact opposite. I wanted to be just like him when I was young. Mm -hmm. Even with all the toxicness and all the dysfunction. Mm -hmm. Because that's how he made me feel. He would literally, oh, you only got one girlfriend. Shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then as I got older, I'm like, that is not what's up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So as I started to get older and realize I was becoming just like him, that's what made me go out and mm -hmm. do a lot of... Work, work on myself to yeah. be the and that's self awareness. Opposite. You pick up on it. Yeah. A, a lot of people float through life without that self awareness. Yeah, they're just on autopilot. Yeah, so they're gonna lean in towards all of that. So it's like, okay, well, they're just going off these gut feelings, and they don't even realize the source of the gut feelings. Yeah. So it's like, oh, that guy, he's exciting, and I've seen that too. Like a friend I was helping in L.A. in an abusive relationship. It's because she grew up in one of those. So yeah, she, yeah, that's the love you think you deserve. Weirdly. Yeah, and it's yeah. just familiar, and yeah. it's, and it's no, it, we have that with food. Some of us just like eating the same food that we had as a kid, whether it's healthy or unhealthy for us, because it has a nostalgic value. Yeah. That's why I love Wendy's. Yeah. What happened with Wendy's? Wendy's is the ultimate comfort food. Really? Yes. Because my grandmother used to, I used to take my grandmother into town, take her into Monk's Corner, and that's what she wanted to do. Stop by Wendy's all the time. And she wanted her fries hot. So that's what, that's my comfort food. Wendy's yeah. is my yeah. comfort food. You I probably felt a lot of love around your that's grandma. That's it. 
That's it. So yeah. now you're attaching that love to that food. That's it. Yeah. So you're chasing the feeling, not the food. Chasing the feeling, not the. It's the same thing with people. Like when you miss somebody, yeah. you don't miss them. You miss the feeling they give you. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. You know what I love? Dicks. I love being right. <laughs> Wait, what? I, excuse me, Taylor. What? I feel hate coming from over there. What? And what? I don't know why. why? 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 I don't know why, why? why? this why? hate just came from over why? there. Why? 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 I just like being right. Why? You know what I mean? Talk to us more. Because, you know, <laughs> for, for, for years, I've been telling y'all over and over, over and over, yep. I get mistaken for Morris Chestnut all the time. I see it. I see it. People I say it. it to me all the time. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you was Morris Chestnut. I'm walking down the street. Hey, Lance. You know what I mean? Yeah. Love you, investment. You know what I mean? I get it all the time. Nobody believes me. Think I'm being delusional. You know, think I'm being insane. Thinking I'm being a fucking nuthead. Yeah. And then here goes Mars you Chestnut get on Jennifer. A lot, right? Let me see. Yes. And listen. then people mix you up with other celebrities sometimes. <laughs> Who do you get mixed up with? Oh, man. See, I get mixed up with people say, uh, yeah, I loved you in Fast and the Furious. Uh, Tyrese. Tyrese? Tyrese. <laughs> Tyrese. Let's see, y'all. Um, Can y'all see? Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, was that, that was us at, a, uh, at an <laughs> event in Atlanta. Um, I get recognized uh, some, well, very recently uh, for the first couple of times <clears throat> they thought I was Charlemagne Charlemagne the guy yeah. wow yeah. pause yeah. pause let me pause, look from pause. this way anybody yeah. see that one first of all they used the wrong picture <laughs> yeah that's not the best they were picture. swaying the jury yeah. you know yeah, what I mean yeah, yeah, they yeah. were trying to get the jury to not agree yeah with everybody else who yeah. just recognizes handsome when they see handsome yeah, yeah okay yeah, they yeah. should have used the picture of me with a nice button up on our suit right Squinting my eyes. The GQ one. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's all about the squint of, yeah, squint of the eyes is. and the smiles. No, that, not that one. Go. There's that's another the one where you have a whole suit on, I forget, I thought. That's another one when I got the vest on, you know what I mean? Yeah, the vest one. That's the one they should have used. But I love the validation. Bro, you're handsome, bro. Thank you. You're handsome. Thank you. And so is Morris Chestnut. That's right. And even though you guys look nothing alike, you need That's to know true. that you're a handsome man. Thank you. And sometimes that. handsome people get confused for one another. That's very true. That's it. That's you guys just true. might be top 1% of handsome. That's very and true. And it just so happens people are so not used to seeing men look that good That's that right. they start going, oh, are you guys the same? That's what I'm saying. We you're were you're on the same unique. conveyor belt. That's it. There's nothing That's I can it. do about that. God That's it. created it in that way. God did. We're the design. God did. Now it's up to you to decide. Who's the Phantom? Who's the Chrysler 300? You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's literally the same design. It's the same design, it's the bro. the same fucking design, It's the bro. same design. You got to feel good about yourself. I do. That should be validating because I think what happened a lot of times is like people saw you as like radio comedian. They saw this guy's sex symbol and they really couldn't put together radio comedian and sex symbol. There's been a lot of them. Ha name one. I, I can't think of any other sex symbol in radio except for me. <laughs> think about it. We broke the mold. Before us, it was fat radio personalities. They Is that at, term face for radio? You got a face for There's go. a literal term face for radio. There you go. My email, it still is radio face. I mean, <laughs> I mean. That's my, email, like, my, my email is radio face. That was back when you had the radio face. Though. But things might have changed. <laughs> I still might have a radio face. I don't know. Well, I, I, huh? I have a multimedia face. Okay, fair enough. So have you, you had work done? Is that what it is? Did no, you, did no, you go no, to DJ no. Bro? No, you know, you know, I was thinking about this yesterday as I was working out. The only thing I think I would actually do cosmetically mm -hmm. is the steroid. The what? The steroid. What else was the shit? Peptides. What's it called? The peptides. Pep the pop tarts. Peptides. What are you talking about? Yeah. The steroid, the shit you was talking about that you say the actors and shit are taking. Oh, peptides. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, but that's not surgery. Oh, like, oh, growth, like GH? No, it's just a shot. You put, yeah, it's it's not GH, but essentially what it does but is it's changing you increase cosmetically. cell growth. Yeah. All of these dudes are doing that shit to look extra fucking sexy yes. in these movies. Yes. Let's be clear. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. If you did that, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to ruin Morris Chestnut's career. <laughs> if you look the way that you look right now, okay, give me and, more. Tell me more and you it. started to get shredded, bro, <laughs> Okay, there's no reason for Morris Chestnut. Whoa. Uh, and and Whoa. with Whoa. all due respect, because I Whoa. love Morris Chestnut. Whoa. I love him. Whoa. But the way that you look, this brother. This is fringe. This is what fringe yo, yo, supposed to do. The no, way that you up. look. What do you mean? Get I don't hear gas. I hear pep no. talk. This is a pep this talk. This is a pep talk pep with the pep talk. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? All I'm trying to say is if I'm more chestnut, I'm pleading with your agent right now. I'm pleading with your manager right now. I'm pleading with you. I'm like, do not let Charlotte get ripped because it's going to be a problem. He will be rendered redundant. 
Where do we get oh, them yeah, from? Oh, yeah, 100%. Huh? Where do we get them from? Yeah, 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 yeah. Chill, 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 chill. I heard about chill, all chill. kind of shit yesterday. Chill, chill, chill. Because I was kind of hating on somebody. I'm not, Who? I'm not going to. Who? <laughs> Who? <laughs> Who? <laughs> Who? I was just looking. I'm like. Who? You know how you see somebody like, hey, that's steroids, yo. It's like when you're watching a porn, you see that big yo, thing. That shit ain't real, yo. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> They got steroids for that? I wish. <laughs> no, by yo. the way. Hey, now. Now, if that shit was real. Hey, now. Hey, now. Cosmetically, I, I, get, I had a couple more inches. Yeah, wait, a couple more? Just a couple. Is it Okay, because you want a boy. Nah, I just want a couple more just to have. Oh, okay. I'm done with the, I'm done. I'm, You're I'm, done with the kids? kids is, oh, I'm getting a vasectomy and everything. Oh, really? I'm 100%. Can I go there for that? Why? Because <laughs> cause the second they do it, I'm like, yo, you don't want to get girls pregnant no more? Ha! Gay! <laughs> <laughs> you know, after you get the vasectomy, you got to nut 20 times? Why? Really? Yeah, you got to nut 20 times to get it all out. Oh, that's fire. Yeah. That's the loop. Oh, because the rest. Otherwise, you have some still in there. The survivors. The survivors, bro. That's facts. <laughs> there are survivors in there. You thought you bombed this town. No. There's 20 <laughs> motherfuckers left. You got to get rid of all of them. The most nah, resilient. You're you right, though. You act, this is, that's how uh, I think Antonio Cromartie got his wife pregnant again. Uh, Dead you, ass. Yeah, no, for real. Because he got the vasectomy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so mm -hmm. I, think, I think you got it, man. Tell me who you were hating on. Whose body you were hating on. I'm not going to Come say. on, bro. No. Can you give us uh, initials? No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. No, come on. Do I know who they are? We'll bleep it. But it wasn't like hate, like, it wasn't hate like, oh, fuck him. It was just like, ain't no way. You know what I mean? Ain't no way. And you know, when your wife around, yeah, yeah, yeah. Might have yeah. glared a little too long yeah, at the magazine. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know how that shit Come be on so now. <laughs> Tell me who it is. Y'all never Tell did that? Tell me who it is. You never did that? Nah. You're a liar. I find ways to hate on everybody my wife like, though. <laughs> Even if I like that motherfucker. <laughs> if she agreed too much with me on someone I like, I'd be like, yeah, he ain't all that. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Look at this goofy ass motherfucker. Laughing a little too long in another comedian. What you comedian? laughing at? <laughs> what you laughing at? I got jealous of a clown the other day. I went to the I went to the professional bull riding. I went to the professional oh, bull riding, I that shit, yo. and it was amazing. But the clown was cracking my wife up. I'm like, you laughing at a clown right now? <laughs> like, is that what I need to do to make you laugh? I just come home with a nose and huh huh. Is that what you, you need me to do? All these well thought out lines, ideas and jokes lines, and ideas. shit. <laughs> you need you me to pay to pay my face? <laughs> is that what you need to get some laughs at dinner? <laughs> I was furious. She kept like she kept laughing, like hitting her knee. I'm like, you never hit your knee before laughing. Oh man, there's, there's some little Wayne footage about little Wayne talking about some dude came up to him being like, "Yo, my girlfriend loves you." He's like, "Don't tell me." He, he, could, he goes, "Hate on me." He yeah. Goes, don't, tell, don't tell me your girlfriend loves me. Yeah. You should be hating on me. Uh uh. What Am is I, that? Huh? What is that? Uh, I don't know. Fragile masculinity. Is it? Yeah. But I don't want to be too comfortable with my masculinity because these motherfuckers too comfortable got people having sex with their wives and shit. No, that's wild. That cuck that's, shit. That's too much comfort. Yeah, that cuck, cuck, what's that shit called? Is it cucking? Cucking. That cucking shit is nuts. And they think we're insecure. I. That's one ice bath I'm not getting in. That's the <laughs> ultimate ice bath. <laughs> you want to tell me? Word up. That. Word up. Fuck the ice bath. Your wife bath. <laughs> <laughs> you, watching, you watching another man inside your goddamn wife, bro. That is the that's Bruh. probably the most difficult shit. That's funny. And then I saw some video yeah. where the guy was like, "Yo, she was making noise." I got right that. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. That's funny. There's that something shit is to that. Crazy. What do you call that, humble? What? I I'm, I don't, I don't, I didn't know that was real. I didn't, I've never met someone what? who's like cool with that. Oh no, I'm not talking about. The <laughs> Come on, humble. Come on, humble. I'm just talking about. Us, we're secure, right? But it's just like, yo, you know, you feel a little envious when your wife is like looking at somebody a little too long or laughing at somebody, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I guess this is, you know, jealousy. I don't know what, what the, you know, from that point. Jealousy is not yeah. unhealthy. Envy is not unhealthy. Envy is not unhealthy. <laughs> jealousy Wait, which, and envy are different. No, no, no. Jealousy is the one. Envy is unhealthy. That's the one that God says, because envy is you don't want them to have it. Jealousy is or one of the uh, no no em envy is you like so there's multiple types of envy but yeah. generally envy is you like what they have so envy reveals what you value in life yeah yeah, yeah. Right? but jealousy is you're afraid they're gonna take what you have ooh okay really? I thought it was the opposite I mm -hmm. thought envy was like you don't even want them to have it and jealousy is you wish you had it 
No. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's the other way. Which one? God doesn't like. Yeah, I thought now. I thought being afraid of what. Because even what, what, whenever, whenever God said it, it was said in a different language, and people translated it right, depending on where you're hearing it from. You sound like you described robbery, humble. <laughs> what? When you said jealousy is when you're afraid somebody's going to take what like, you have. Like jealousy is you're afraid like whoever this this dude you're hating on. You trying to say I was afraid a clown was going to steal my wife? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's jealousy. Yo, jealous that's of the my clown. biggest nightmare. Because you don't envy Sometimes the clown. Sometimes I be waking up in the middle of the night. And, I, I, and you know, his crate and a clown is having sex with my wife, and he tries to pull out, and his dick just keeps coming out longer and longer and longer and longer. And I just gotta watch him. Like, Take your dick out of my boy! Why does your dick keep on going forever? This is a nightmare. Stop! Run out of dick. <laughs> See, you're jealous of the clown, but you you envious of the dick. Golly, bro, let me write that down too. Did you hear what he just said? <laughs> yes, you're yes, yes. Jealous yes. of the clown, but you're really envious of the dick. But I gave him a big dick for no reason. <laughs> you're just not assuming clowns got big dicks. Yeah, I, I don't see, I don't feel a lot of big dick energy with clowns, but maybe they do. Yo. <laughs> nah, that ain't true, bro. Yo, clowns son. got big ass yo, feet, yo. bro. Oh, <laughs> what the fuck yeah. are you talking about, oh, Sean? Oh, no. Clowns got them big oh, ass feet. No. Bro. This is the whole special. Oh, right? no. Yep, yo. I knew my fear was rooted in truth. <laughs> Walking around that big ass clown shoes for a reason. Baggy pants. Baggy pants. Bro, why you think their face is white? They nutted on themselves by accident, bro. That's what it was. That's not makeup. Mouth. That's it. That big ass fucking mouth, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bro. Like, what are you talking about? Oh, no. Clown sucking another clown's dick. <laughs> you gotta have big mouth. Too, Golly. <laughs> this is a rational fear. Why y'all made me feel like I was irrational? I don't for think a there's any such thing as an irrational fear. We gotta stop saying that. <laughs> we gotta stop saying that fears are irrational. What I'm afraid of is what I'm afraid of. Just because you're not afraid of it doesn't mean that I'm being irrational. I mean, sometimes you're irrational, bro. Like what? I don't know. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like sometimes it's irrational. Like you just walking down the street, you know, and you see somebody and you assume they're going to do something horrible. That's irrational. You just said that about New York. You said I'm you irrational, up. bro. Listen, hey. by the way, that's not irrational, especially when you're hearing shit about six-year-old shooting teachers. But where was that? I don't know. Florida? What, what where was it? Virginia. Virginia. Wow. My point in saying that is now you got to look out for everybody anybody's a potential shooter. Mm. Like, there's nobody that you can look at and be like, okay, I'm comfortable around that person. Mm. Which is all the more reason you should start strike, you should strike up conversations with people. You should say hello when you're in spaces with people. We're all sharing energy. Mm. I say it all the time. The only thing that's, you know, keeping us safe is just us not being crazy towards one another. Mm. So why wouldn't you speak to people when you walk in the room? Just say hello. Let me see what's on your mind. What a what if it's a clown, bro? <laughs> <laughs> come on, bro. Depends hey, where. come on, bro. You, uh, by the way, he's coming from mines. No, what room would you walk in where a clown would just be there? <laughs> if you walk in a room and a clown is just there, something is fucking wrong, bro. <laughs> <laughs> my wife said that. <laughs> my wife said that he was just cleaning up the apartment. <laughs> what, what are you trying to say, Joe? Man, fuck. What are you trying to say? You just got this Mexican clown cleaning up your goddamn apartment. <laughs> it wasn't just him. There was seven of them. There was, there was seven of them. They and they just came out of one little car. <laughs> I thought it was peculiar in Charlemagne. I called the elevator and there was at least 14 of them came out of the elevator at the same time. I was like, how are God's green earth? The 14 clowns spin in the elevator, Charlemagne. This is... This is my worst fit. I, I need your heart monitor. <laughs> Give me a heart monitor right now. We're going to title this podcast Mexi Clowns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Humble, what else are you covering? <laughs> Yo, come on, Humble. Come on now, We didn't mean humble. to bring you into this. Humble. Yo. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to figure out how to frame it with his, his that's a very rational fear of clowns now. I feel oh, like. I know bad people that got that fear, though. I had a fear of crown since I, since I was young. That's why I think yeah. they made the movie It. I feel like It, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like clowns at all, matter of fact. Why do clowns scare people? I mean, but that's like the, the, the It movie and the Joker, I think, is rooted in people. Can I tell you, clowns. can I tell you a serious thing that happened to me as a child? Man. So, what, like... <laughs> 
<laughs> Man, let me get to laugh out now. You know, because this shit might be wild. I already know where his brain went, and it's fucked up. <laughs> let me get this laugh out now. This shit might be wild, bro. <laughs> it ain't even like bro, when that. people start off, you want to know what happened to me as a child? <laughs> bro. This guy is crazy. No, for real, man. This guy, for real. <laughs> this guy's crazy. Now, it was not what you're thinking, okay? okay. Um, I got by a pack of clowns, bro. <laughs> 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 it's not what you think, Charlotte. I know you think I had a bad experience at like a circus or something. It's actually not that. There was a whole pack of it was a posse of clowns. Jesus. <sighs> I'm sorry to happen. They was going at it, bro. Yeah. Clown sounds and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Giggling like clay. Like that. They was doing. You know the joke is pregnant? <laughs> I seen the Wow. I seen the Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> nah, come on, in all seriousness. Come on, there's a lot of clowns out there, oh, bro. Man. You being insensitive, bro. This guy the, is so stupid. The, when I was young, and my boy Derek's birthday was like the third or fourth grade, we saw it, the movie. Now I'm so old, the shit was in cassettes. And if you remember, it's a two parter. Yeah, VCR. VCR, yeah. yeah tape. Sorry, tape, tape. Yeah. So it's a two parter. Yeah. VHS, yeah. VHS. And it's, I only saw the first part. So I never saw it die. So I'm in oh, fourth so grade. Scared. Bro, I'm in fourth grade. I had, I, we were all sleeping. I need to go to the bathroom. Remember, it comes out the drains, right? Yeah. I'm in fourth grade. I had to ask another kid to come to the bathroom with me <laughs> while I peed because I was so scared it was going to crawl out the drain and drain and drag me my, my dick back into the toilet. You a fucking clown, bro. Yo. <laughs> I'm trying to be vulnerable clown. with you right now. That, that's not a scary thing as a child, bro. No, as a child, no. That's no, why bro, I don't wash bro. my hands to this day. <laughs> a lot of people ask me why I don't wash my hands. I don't need to be in the bathroom any longer than I need to be. I peed. I ain't getting nothing on my hands. I got the fuck out, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, so I sense. never saw it die. So I wonder if you're still afraid of that or it's just that it's a habit. You made it a habit. Sometimes your fears become habits. Bro. I feel like Ooh. you guys need Ooh. to have a clown on the show. Come on now, bro. Y'all should just have a clown here and y'all need to like just work it out. Like have a let him do the therapy session between you and the clown. Yeah. I mean, Yo, if you're down, down Chris, sometimes your fear become habits. If you, <laughs> <laughs> that's a book chapter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, for real. But I just I mean you you we laughing, but I just thought about that shit. Like sometimes your fear just becomes a habit. Of You're course. not really afraid. Of this course. This is what you do. Yeah, yeah that's OCD it, yeah. when you think about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. OCD is your fears becoming habits. Sometimes your fear becomes your habits. And I guess you got to break your habit. You got to break your fear to break those habits. Because that's essentially what it is. Like, even what Humble's talking about by bringing the, if you if, if you bring a clown, where, like all jokes aside, you bring the clown on mm -hmm. to face your fear, you're really just trying to break your habit, right? Yeah. Essentially. Well, you're breaking a pattern of behavior. Yeah. But isn't a pattern of behavior a habit? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah but yeah. I'll be honest with you guys right now. I'm down to do this session with the clown, but I, you, I might swing on that motherfucker. You really afraid if of If he says like the that? wrong thing, if he, if he squirts that little, if I look at his little, if his, his little oh, yeah, flower, flower shit, yeah, and then yeah, he, yeah, 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 and I'm genuinely trying to compliment him because I think his flower's nice. Yeah, and then he goes, "Oh, smell it," and I'm excited to smell a fresh flower. Yeah, and then he squirts that shit right in my face, embarrasses me in front of me and my homies. Clown's got to step it up. Would you would you swing on a clown if you noticed he had cauliflower ears? Oh shit! Oh shit! A clown, a clown is in MMA. Yeah. Holy shit! There's nothing I could do to that man. <laughs> Holy shit. There's nothing I could do to that man. Yo, that is man. a wild ass scenario, yo. yo. You swing on a clown and didn't notice he had cauliflower ears. Now you getting your ass beat to death by a fucking clown? <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> then it becomes a very rational fear. That's a real fear. I, yeah. Honestly, I think most clowns do MMA. But are you afraid? Of, but sh what should you fear in that situation? Clowns or people with cauliflower ears? I mean, if you swing on them first. And I'm afraid of clowns yeah. already. Yeah. And I'm also afraid of people with cauliflower ears. Putting them together. Ooh. Oh, my Lord. That's like the last Ooh. boss. 
Yeah. That's the last boss. An antagonizing clown with cauliflower. Ears. Oh my God. Because I feel like you don't really meet. I think most people who fight don't go out looking for fights. But clowns are different, bro. Clowns are different. But that's why you should mind your fucking business. But yeah. they don't do that. The clowns love. don't do that. Clowns don't do that, bro. Clowns, clowns is, can't because clowns get paid off the, uh, the they get paid off attention. The instigators, yeah. yeah. They instigate. Yeah. They're bad, bro. You know what? That shit could be elite. Well, being a clown? That You know that there's countries where it's illegal? To be a clown? 100%. No. Qatar? Um, Sweden? <laughs> Seriously? You can't be a clown in those countries, bro. <laughs> I don't fucking know, bro. Yeah, I got yeah. Nah, everybody giggling. Dead ass. So I'm it's a joke. Uh, I I Have y'all seen? I was locked up with was, two clowns. Bro. Exactly. They was locking clowns up out there. They don't you play that clown shit. Yeah. They don't play clown shit. Hold on. Explain this to me. You just, it's illegal to be a clown now. You know. can't be a clown in Sweden. You can't be a clown in. Like because it's white face? Not only that, but also because they're fucking crazy, those clowns, bro. <laughs> Yo, dead ass, you can't be a clown so in Saudi Arabia. they profile clowns. They just profile they, them. It, but it, it's like, they look at them like terrorists. Really? They look at them like Is terrorists. This, I'm saying, I don't know. Look it up right now. See if you could no, be I a... I can't see that shit. No yeah. joke. French town cracked down on clowns. It's, it's a plague, bro. They are, it's a plague. That's in the U.S. though. No, French town. French Where, oh, town. Oh, I'm looking at the French. Okay, no. French town cracked down on clowns. They costumes. done with that shit. Really? They done with that shit. And then the French clowns tried to rebrand into mimes. They're like, we're not clowns, we're mimes. Oh, I'm stuck in a box. But oh, that's shit. the illusion of control they give you. Yeah. Oh. They want you to think that they stuck in a box. Right? And you know what box they really stuck in? Your wife's these piece of fucking <laughs> shit clowns. You know who created you know that legislation? <laughs> that's some shit. They be in your wife like, oh, I can't get out. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I'm stuck in this box. That is somebody <laughs> with a fear of clowns. Whoever created that legislation... Has a fear of clowns. Rational. That's what you do. When Rational. You're, when you're afraid of something and you want to control something, you put some laws on it. That, Damn. I never knew that build shit. Build a wall, bro. <laughs> For the Mexican. <laughs> you need to bring it back around, baby. You need to bring it right back around. <laughs> we need to build a wall for these Mexican clowns, bro. Oh For real. Oh, God. For real. Uh, if your New Year's goals are to manage your budget better and save money, you need Rocket Money, okay? Rocket Money, formerly known as True Bill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people who have subscriptions they forget about, like that streaming service you bought to watch just one show on, or that free trial that you never even used. Rocket Money will quickly and easily identify your subscriptions for you so you can stop paying for the ones you don't want. Rocket Money makes canceling subscriptions as easy as a click of a button. Simply find a subscription you don't want and press cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. No more long hold times with customer service or tedious emailing back and forth. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. Let's not act like. All of us aren't wasting money subscribing, you know, to some app that we got just because we wanted to watch a certain TV show. And then we forgot we even had the app and we wondering where this money is coming from every month. OK, so stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash idiots. That's rocketmoney.com slash idiots. Rocketmoney.com slash idiots. Now let's get back to the show. Um, What did y'all think of the Dana White shit? What the? You <laughs> <laughs> ain't got time for no segue, bro. Let's just get to it. This kind of is a segue because you're talking about cauliflower ears no, okay. and MMA. This is what we should do with the Dana White stuff. Okay. Other things you could do when your wife slaps you. Okay. Other things you could do. I like Because we all know slapping her back is not the right thing to do. Never put your hands on a woman. Surprisingly, I know I agree with you 100%. Surprisingly, we did the topic on Breakfast Club this morning and I was... Uh, approaching it from the angle of what D.L. Hughley was saying, how, you know, he feels like nobody's paying this any attention. If this was a black guy, they'd have been digging up old tweets and mm. they'd have been bringing up fights he had in third grade. Mm. I agree with D.L. to a certain extent, but I think that all of that stuff that he's looking for, it comes from social media. Like, mainstream media isn't really doing that. Like, that literally comes from people Ooh. online digging up that kind of stuff, and then mainstream media might latch onto it. But it's right. not like mainstream media wasn't, you know, uh, reporting, reporting on the, on the case. Yeah. So, what are the other reasons that people may not be taking it as serious? One of the big things that people were saying was because 
she slapped him. Yeah. Also and not so okay. It could be self defense. Also not okay. Yeah. So a lot of people saw it from that perspective. I I, I got that from the callers that were calling in. They mm. they they thought that well, she hit him. People need to keep their hands to themselves. You can't expect somebody not to hit you back when you hit them. I what think two things are true. I okay. think that one, there's a double standard that we all believe in, which is you just don't put your hand on women. A hundred percent. Like, and that's even if they do it first, which is wrong and fucked up. You should never put your hand on your partner. Run. That being said, yo, run. If there's no women around to handle the situation for you, <laughs> run. Run. I'm serious. We got to start going back to blaming shit on alcohol too. No, nobody, no, no. Nobody wants to do that, but it's true. Substances alter your th your thought process. Yeah, but you're always responsible for your actions. You can never do it, but you can't ask them if they're on their period. There's other things. Humble. What else can you do in that situation? Your humble opinion. <laughs> yeah, what is your humble opinion? You gotta you gotta walk the fuck away. That's what I think. Walk the fuck I away agree. is a good I one. Right. You're in public and you you famous as fuck. People are gonna be filming you. Yeah. Like he 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 doesn't see people holding cameras and staring at him. Like Yeah. There's that, and I think I think the big issue with his is because he's been talking about that, especially with John Jones and all that. Mm. All he's been talking about, like for years, and they're, they're, they're pulling up posts where he's telling fighters like, "You can come back from a lot, but you can never come back from putting your hands on a woman." But I don't know if wow. that's I don't know if that's true because true he not. let John Jones back and he let yeah. Greg Hardy back. Yeah. And both of them have accusations of that. Yeah. So that 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 actually those are the two situations that I think kind of help him right here. Damn, well, I didn't know that. I didn't know that this morning when I was talking about it. No, but but the thing is, he did let them. Like John Jones is going to fight for the title right John, now. Yeah. yeah. And and Greg Hardy was and, in and I think the that's organization just a message for a while. That happens out here, anyways. If you're profitable enough, everything is forgiven. Yeah, but Greg Hardy wasn't even profitable. Yeah. That's the other thing. That, so it's I like he had this situation when he was playing in the NFL, and then he still got signed to the UFC. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So I think it's one of those things where like. In in a weird situation, he's actually been giving people second chances from these things. Yeah. So it's one of those things where it's like, if he was super strict on that, and then there'd be no way where he could continue being the, the CEO. Yeah. Because if he's super strict on them, it's like, why do you deserve a second chance? It, sh it tells me that you shouldn't be so judgmental either. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like sometimes when you, and, and you know, it's so interesting. I remember uh, <clears throat> Minister Farrakhan has a quote. When Minister Farrakhan says, when you see somebody you know, going through some shit or you see somebody getting in some trouble, don't laugh, learn. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. And I mean, that's to me, that's what that is. Like, I, you know, that's why cancel coach is such a tricky thing, man, because you, you never know when you could be in a situation like that. Yeah. You, you don't know what you're going to do until you're in that situation. Yeah. In his mind, maybe he never thought he would yeah. put hands on a woman until he realizes, oh, shit, like, you know, it happened. Yeah. You know? But he's yeah. right. I mean, and, and that's the other thing. He apologized for it immediately. Yeah, he called, he he called he TMZ, yeah. 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 You know? So I don't know why the media is not reacting to this, you know. Um, but I think the other thing that people are saying, whether they realize they're saying it, is they want him to have some consequences. So when, when D.L. Hughley is saying, like, right. how come people aren't talking about this? He's basically saying, where are the consequences? And that that becomes mm -hmm. like and completely reasonable. And mm -hmm. but that also becomes um it it becomes a I don't want to use the word there's like personal investment in that, right? So for example, like I think anybody who maybe doesn't like Dana White or anybody who sees uh, racial inequality mm -hmm. is going to use this as an example of either, hey, Dana White sucks or, hey, this is racial injustice. Mm -hmm. And the problem with both of those are a lack of concern about the person that could be really affected, which is his wife and kids. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. it's like if I saw people really upset absolutely. and they're only talking about wife and kids, then I'm like really understanding of that, like absolutely. thoughtful. But it seems most of the reaction to this is either I hate Dana White, you guys should too. Yeah, opportunism. It's it. It feels a little opportunistic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I think like, the nature of that business is not like there's a lot of family oriented sponsors in the UFC. Like it, it really gears towards a demographic that like mm -hmm. violence. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's the other thing they were saying too. Is like because he's the president of UFC and MMA is so violent, you kind of expect that yeah. behavior. But the only reason I got to push back on that is because boxing is violent. Yep, football is violent, but I don't see boxers and football players getting that same. I mean, grace. I think you got to look at the corporate side of. It. I just Lord. like you know what what yeah went to jail though. Not for that. Yes, he did. I think he went to jail for. No, he went to jail for DV. He did. Yeah, yeah, yeah he went to jail for DV. Fair enough. Yeah, I thought it was. All right, I thought it was good. I, I'm looking at it from like if this was the CEO of like Disney, it'd be a whole different situation versus like what a court like who the who are the big corporate sponsors for like a UFC event? Oh yeah. yeah. Where they're like, oh, this is gonna hurt our bottom lines. We're gonna have to pull out of yeah. this. And it's like, you know, it's probably like they have like Manscaped or something like that, and then that right. might not 
You, you know, know what's so interesting about that one? And, and you're absolutely right, Humble, but it's like, yo, who do these people think are watching Disney? Like, there's nobody that's perfect. It's the same thing with mm. politicians. Like, yeah. we know people are not perfect. I think nowadays you trust people less when they appear too perfect. That's why the 48 Laws of Power always said never appear too perfect. Yeah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to have some dirt on you because that's what we're human. But I think corporate identity, because I'm, I'm, even when you start thinking about, like, like the culture wars that, that are happening right now, mm -hmm. I start to realize that like a lot of it is the people that I know who are complaining about it are people who work corporate jobs who mm -hmm. are being told like, for example, put your pronouns in your email. Yeah. You know, and it's because these corporations are trying to appear perfect. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. want to make everybody happy and they want to make as much money as possible. And then they're pushing that onto their employees, which is creating kind of friction because people are like, what? Like, I don't know what this stuff is or what mm -hmm. have you. And I think, you know, I don't, I don't have a, a, a nine to five job so there's nobody telling me how to conduct myself so none of this is something that i have a stake in and i don't concern myself with it so but if I you want to tell me what to do then and then not up uphold those same values when something happens to you then i'm going to feel like you're being a hypocrite yeah as an employee that's what you're saying yeah yeah and there's also and just like the company you know so i think you know it gets interesting when you think of like a netflix and like yeah. how you know they're they back Chappelle and and, and you know you know mm -hmm. when it comes to certain culture right. wars stuff like that but like He's probably making them a boatload of money too. That's the other thing. It's like you, you, we can't expect corporations to be loyal to anything yeah. other than making their shareholders the most money. Yeah. But it's also up to corporations to live up to that responsibility. Sometimes they blur the line. Sometimes they go, it's important to us that we have a black movie selection for Black History Month. It's like, you de but you don't care about black movies. Yeah, you don't yeah, care yeah, about yeah. black people. You care about yeah. making money off people who might be interested in black movies during this month. Yeah. Yeah. You're trying to profit off it's of profit. the holiday. And if they were it's like Christmas, exactly. Now, <laughs> literally, if, if they were open about it, it maybe it wouldn't work as well. Maybe people wouldn't buy as much stuff. But there'd be much less scrutiny when some a sort of a hypocritical behavior came around because they could always go, "Nah, we always about making money, so we're gonna do whatever makes us money." Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? No, absolutely. But we, we have to know that we live in a society where everything is monetized, right? Yeah. Like, even if, whether or not you admit it or not, when Black History Month comes around and, you know, you do all of these Black History Month discounts or Black History Month programs, yep. you know why they're doing that. Same thing with Women's History Month, mm -hmm. you know? Bro, I, mean? I, had a, I had a joke. I had a joke about Juneteenth. I had a joke. This became was, true. It became I true. Yeah, I what, what was the joke? The joke was like, uh, you know, I was like, next year they're going to be Juneteenth sales, right? Yeah. Three fifths off every day and whatever, blah, blah. And uh, <laughs> literally the next year, I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was living in a parody. There were Juneteenth sales. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not only are there Juneteenth sales, there are people that put together like Juneteenth ice cream meals, ice cream, yeah. like you know, they'll yeah. do Juneteenth meals. And yeah. even that causes outrage because it'll be the stereotypical stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Chicken, whatever it is. Right. So it's like, I don't know if everybody's trying to be inclusive or if everybody's just profiting the best way. Or it works that way. Cause it's like by companies performatively being inclusive, that sets culture. Mm -hmm. So it's like Toronto, they have, they have a really big pride parade. But it's like hyper corporate. Mm. Like, go watch this performance on the Viagra stage. Yeah, and that's literally what it's. <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah. it's literally called, the Viagra stage. <laughs> yeah, and then the other stage is like the Ontario Lottery Corporation stage. All the yeah. stages are given corporate names. Yeah, and then they change the the crosswalk to rainbow colors, and all the banks put flags up and everything for just the, that month for Pride yeah. Month. And it's like it's super performative. But I can see the value of it for like a little kid seeing the normalization of just various cultures. But is stuff. it normalization or monetization? <laughs> but monetization uh, creates normalization. Does once, it? Once it becomes profitable, it becomes normal. It becomes normal. That's the only so you all representation it. is. It's congratulations. You're Your community yeah. is giving us enough money for us to acknowledge you. But yeah. to me, normal normalization is when you see it all the time for no reason, and you only do that when it's profitable. Yeah. yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, the stuff we're talking about, we don't see all the time for no reason. No, like, so for example, like... Tacos, bro. I mean, tacos are normal, right? We see them everywhere exactly. but on because Cinco they're de delicious Mayo, so you can make some money off of them, bitch. Absolutely, but on Cinco de Mayo, they're a thing. But, but I, 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 that's a great example. Yeah. Because you see them on Cinco de Mayo because I guess that's a, you know, I guess traditional dish. Yeah. But we grew up Taco Bell. We grew up eating tacos, Taco Tuesday. Like, yep. it is normal, not because it's being monetized, but just because it's normal. Well, I guess, me. I guess first... 
we need to like it. Mm-hmm. Then it becomes monetized. Once they realize we like it, they monetize it. Yeah. And then it becomes so normal. Once they realize there's a market. So like, for example, like there ain't no sell. Like, so for example, like black folks are probably 20, 25 years ahead in terms of progress and entertainment than South Asians, right? Mm-hmm. So there's no South Asian Disney movies yet with South Asian characters. Mm-hmm. There isn't going to be no South Asian Little Mermaid. So that's not true, though. Aladdin. Aladdin, that, that's, that's, see, that's, that's Middle Eastern, man. It was, come on. It was about, one. Uh, it was one. Damn. Come on. Sorry. Call me stupid, but what about the... the, 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 the yeah, that was the one they always say about Andrew. I'm like, yo, Andrew's got all these about, funny racist what? jokes, but he knows everything. No, where, what part? I guess, uh, it was Asia. Aladdin, man, that's, 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 that's Middle East. But that's Asia. No. What about the, the Red Panda East? joint? What continent the is... The Red Panda joint. Hold on. What, what continent okay. is uh, the Middle East then? Asia. I think it's just the Middle East. I don't even think that's... Like... No, that's Asia, bro. Yeah, it oh, I think, well, that's the South Asia. So I'm talking about Ain't the, the North Asia. <laughs> it's the South part of Asia. All them That's fucking West countries Asia. is on the water. So what is considered South Asian? I'm right, bro. Like what people call like like India, Pakistan. Yeah, that's okay. That. okay got you, got you. Like got you. We're, there's a billion and a half people. Got you, like got that, you. right? Got so like, is China South Asia? It's East Asia. Where's Akash? Akash South Asia. It, Akash, it Akash, Akash term, same as me. Okay. The gotcha. term South Asian is dumb. Because how are you going to tell us? It is no, no. You know what it is? No, explain, explain. The term India is dumb because India is not a like India is not a thing. India is a India. Well, now you're getting super existential. Not even South Asia is the continent. The South of that shit. It's just like when we call uh you know Southern Americans we're like the South, and it's like well yeah I live in uh San Diego California. It's like. Well, yeah, that's south of, of uh, but if you're not southwest. from the south. You mean cultural? Yeah, I get it what you're saying. It doesn't make sense geographically. Yeah, they go southwest, but it, exact, but right? it's still yeah. whatever. Doesn't matter. Okay, My so body. what people when I'm saying South Asia, what people refer to as like India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, yes, all of that, and then the yeah. So in terms of that, like, there's what's, no representation. Well, because they're oh, still no, picking um, them. You know what I'm about to say? Say a lot, Miss Marvel. <laughs> Miss Marvel's the first one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. That, yeah. 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 That, that, that's the first one. Yeah, right. and that's this year. That's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you feel yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? And that's them recognizing that. Is it, what I'm saying is at the end of the day, it's not like, oh, we need to make people feel included. It's more like, hey, congratulations. You you guys have qualified as a market that we're going to appeal to. Mm. You know? And it's like, and you see it where it's like, you know, and, and I think it's fine. And, then, you know, and there's a journey for everybody. So in the beginning, it would have been like, especially for brown people, it was white guys wearing brown makeup. And then they started having brown guys who definitely can, didn't have accents doing accents. Can I can I ask you a question though yeah. about Aladdin specifically? Why are you going back to Aladdin? Also assuming I know anything about Aladdin. Well, no, 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 no. It's like I think that Disney purposely made it um what is it? Uh I don't want to say like anonymous. What is the word I'm looking for? Oh, they didn't stamp uh, it. Uh androgynous? No, and, that's, that's- yeah, basically culturally androgynous, if you will. Yeah. Androgynous would be like gender, I think, right? Yeah. But because if you look at like Taj Mahal, right? That could be the palace that you see in Aladdin. Not to mention like the names, like Jasmine. How many Indian Jasmines are there? Okay. Ali. How many Indian Ali's? What I think is, I think on purpose, they tried to make it the whole region relatable for the entire region because it's just more people that could tap into it. Yeah, and that goes back to my point. Because it's more monetizable. But I don't think... Even though it's absolutely the Middle East, 100%, yeah, and that's what I, it is. And I didn't grow up thinking those were my people when I watched that. Like, I knew, like, flying carpets, like, that's not something that my people or anybody in India talks about or has in their lore or their culture or their yes, mythology or anything. Yes, 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 yes. Like, that's and, a whole yeah. different thing. So when you think about that, you think Persian rugs, you think Persia. Yeah, or Moroccan. Right, that's, that's North Africa. Like with the, yeah. what do they call the Kufis or whatever yeah. like that? Like, yeah, the Kufi, yeah. And so, and those are like Muslims in North Africa or you're thinking Persia or Syria. <laughs> yeah, all yeah. All of that. Yeah. It's Persia, isn't it? Yeah. That's what yeah. Aladdin is. Yeah. Aladdin, I'm assuming. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It was everything Persia was the AL. Whole and, yeah. Time. Everything was AL. And, and that's all original people too. So like, it's cool. Yeah. But like, that's not, that's not any of my people. They were in Syria. That's the thing. Yeah, Syria is still, all of that area is like, like Babylonian, Assyria. Where yeah, like that got carved out. Yeah, Agrabah is based on many places. Aladdin's Agrabah is based on many places. That's kind of the issue. Like genies in a bottle. There's no stories like that in, in India. Nothing? No. No. Huh. But there's that new movie that came out with Idris Elba where he plays a genie. And again, they're in a, yeah, 300, 
three ten thousand nights something like that yeah, yeah yeah it came out it came out the same it literally came out the same week he had that other movie where he's like fighting lions yeah the same week that other movie came out it's a dude that made uh um mad max he made this really cool artsy movie where uh idris elba is a, a genie do you want to know something crazy when i was a kid i didn't know aladdin wasn't white me neither what interesting interesting i know I, I was talking to akash about this recently we were talking about because akash was like i know that wasn't kind of what you said he goes yeah. i know that wasn't us but it was the closest thing to us so it kind of felt cool to see and then i was like i thought aladdin was a white guy Why? because i think that they per purposely make it whatever that word that we're looking for androgynous but what is cultural androgyny like non-specific chris what's the word i'm looking for I can't think of but like i think they purposely do it like and generic yeah there's like a, a certain yeah. and all, obviously the voice you know it was like fucking jonathan taylor thomas or some shit that was voicing it right yeah and that's the other thing too yeah when you just give everybody a north american accent so i was like oh yeah i think these are just fucking white people culturally ambiguous ambiguous, ambiguous yes ambiguity it. yes 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 so isn't that weird though i don't know i just it, it but wasn't even then, like so even like different. if you went by features and stuff like that, like I mean, and Disney has done such a better job now, but back then, all this shit was racist. That was racist. Lion King was racist as fuck. All the super racist. But once it's not people, then it's like okay, I can suspend disbelief, right? But like when it's people, like I saw in like a little bit of Encanto, right? And mm -hmm. I was like, oh no, this shit Latino than a motherfucker. Yeah, I and mean, that's more modern. So the, like, the modern yeah. shit, they let you know exactly what they're it doing is. it right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But back in the day, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Little Mermaid was white, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't, see, I don't even know no more. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. And no. it's interesting because Little Mermaid is actually based off a some Norwegian Dutch, shit. Yeah, like, I think it's a Dutch story or a Norwegian story. Yeah, and so it's, it's kind of okay actually. for yeah. Hans Christian Andersen. It could, so it could stay white. It's, it's a supposed white story. to be. Yeah. It's like they're not going to change what? Mulan. <laughs> what, bro? It hands Christian Anderson as white, bro. Hey, don't need to Mermaids is white. Stop it. Bro. Mermaids are white, bro. <laughs> mermaids are white, bro. You don't think mermaids are white? I'm not saying that the new version isn't. Like, wasn't I'm it? I'm not saying mermaids are white. I'm saying if the story has origins there, like Mulan. Is you it? don't think mermaid's closer to the equator or a little dog? All I'm trying to say I'm is when my, story, man, my when my man <laughs> wrote the book, he wrote them white. That's, that's, and he invented the idea or mermaids yeah, always I'm not, existed? I'm not arguing that idea. He, he wrote it, he wrote it, and he's from where he's from. That's the story. I'm looking at it the same way, like, are, are they going to let pe people change up Mulan? They need to do that. No, I'm hey, just saying, fair from is the, fair, bro. As I said, for me, when I look at this stuff, I look at it as performative. I don't look at it as them trying to do it to, to make young kids see themselves. I look at it, they're just trying to do it for a cash grab. Mm. And it's not done genuinely. Mm. Take great stories. No, no, I'm not hating on Mulan. I'm saying, for example, what they're doing with like Little Mermaid. Are they going to flip Mulan? Like Mulan I'm is saying, yeah, clearly They flip about, the Little Mermaid, will they flip Mulan? It's a Chinese story. They need to do Mulan, but Taiwan. They need to do Ooh. Mulan, but Taiwan. What about that? That would be fire. They do Taiwanese there, Mulan. There goes your TikTok algorithm. Wait, you think, you think I'm handsome? I don't know this guy. I don't know this guy. I do not condone his hate speech. So my my TikTok and my Instagram discover this morning was absolutely amazing. Not, like, no more, not anymore, though. You just. No, now I'm fucked. But like, yeah. I. I mean, it was, I was dying laughing this morning, bro. And and my humor is getting more and more juvenile on the app. Like, it was just guys farting in public and, like, as a prank. Yeah. And I was howling this morning. Come on. Sorry. It was a guy, he is, a, like, a fart machine or something. He just walks by people and he just asks them directions and then farts and then walks away. <laughs> And I'm howling and I'm sending it to my wife and she's like, why? why I, I guess it's kind of funny. It's just someone farting. <laughs> Nothing has been funnier to me than that, than that humor right there. A guy farting in front of people that weren't expecting it. Also, this one was great. This is a good one. The guy goes, oh, you got to learn how to hide your farts. And he goes, yes. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> that one. Tell me that's not fire. Come on, Taylor. You never farted before? Yep. Yeah. Ew, yeah. nasty. Yo, humans fart 14 times Yo, a day. 14 stuck. times a day, yeah. Taylor farts? What? You yeah. farting 14 times a day? Yeah, humans fart enough to fill a balloon every day. You could fill wow. a balloon of farts out your ass, Taylor? We still, you see 
what? What does that mean? No, 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 no. So Taylor believes that she's actually a thicker presence than Charlemagne. And how does that relate to farts, though? Well, she's. I think you keep. I've been mean, asked me. Okay, but you keep him more in. Also, the bigger your ass, the 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 more the fart sounds like a high pitched scream. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> like a big fat ass. There ain't enough room for it to just. <laughs> right. No, yours is like this. <laughs> You sound like a Mariah Carey. Like, you sound like Mariah breaking glass. That's what your farts sound like. Oh. It's okay, Taylor. Come on. What is love about? Uh, humble, what's love about? What is love? What does that mean for love that I was watching fart pranks this morning, dying as a 39-year-old in my bed? Your, your, your love for comedy. I mean, God damn, that shit cracked me up. Yo, I want to ask you: Are you getting are you getting hate from like the old school comedians now? Hate from you them? Like, I feel like you, you're you're about to steal some spots. Yeah, I mean, there's a little, there's a little, there's mm -hmm. one, there's one, there's one that's doing a little hating, but it's the right one. So yeah, you know what I mean. I, I think I know, but I, yeah, I was thinking about that. Yeah, but I will say a lot of the OGs have been like very supportive. Most of the OGs have been very supportive because, like, I think a lot of them have seen a lot of success doing some of the things that we were able to do, like the social media stuff and, like, you know, putting comedy up on YouTube. And they're seeing, like, that really work for them in their career. So I think a lot of them are stoked about that. Yeah. And uh, I try to help, you know, help out as much as I possibly can to anybody who asks. So, so yeah. Because you also that's... represent a new dynamic to the hustle of comedy. Yes. Because I think especially after when the pandemic hit, you're just like, all right. We in. Yeah, we're in. Yeah. It don't matter what happened. And uh, everybody else is trying to figure out, I can't go live. How do I pay my bills? You're yeah. just like, yo, there are 20 new ways I'm about to make some money. Exactly. And you did that yeah. on top of craft. Yes. Yes. We worked the years on the craft. I think it, yeah, it's like, what are they, what is that saying? Like it takes a, you know, 10 years to be an overnight yeah. sensation or something yeah. like that. Yeah. But, but yeah, I think it was just like working all that time on the craft, making sure that the quality of the product is good because you can't market dog shit. Yeah. And then taking some time to be like, okay, how do we get it out to as many people as possible? And in my estimation, most, com most comics, they love the freedom to create the way that they want to create. You know, a lot of times comics are kind of like misfit individuals that don't really fit into traditional jobs, right? So they really value their f freedom. That's something that I value probably more than anything in the world. So finding new ways where they can put their stuff out in the exact way that they know works because they're out there on the road testing it i think was like really liberating for a lot of people uh the young the young comics coming up right now that's all they know which is really cool but the older one the ogs they're like oh man i know what it's like to have comedy central tell me half the jokes i can't do and they have a sponsorship with with fucking pepsi so i have to change my coca-cola joke into a pepsi joke to fit their thing mm -hmm. and now they don't got to deal with none of that shit anymore so i think that they're like oh this is this is a cool time yeah. for comedy yeah, there's a cool time for comedy. I wonder if the young ones coming up will even, you know what it is? It's cool. What is it? You want the next generation to not know your problems. You just got to make sure you're not, you don't turn into the OGs that are like, you know, the basketball players are like, shit, if, if they play defense on me, I would have dropped 60 points. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like, as long as you don't turn into one of them, I, I think. I, I live in North, I, right now I live in North Hollywood and they have like this small club called the Haha. -Ha. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I go there like, once a week oh yeah and all i want to do is just and i'm seeing the exact same people every week and i'm just like i really hope like that one of these people just blows was this is there something you saw that you really liked um i don't know any of the names but this one dude he's like a he's like a pretty boy um and his jokes are around knowing he's good looking that's good and talking about that yeah um and it's really funny because he still talks about all his defeats from, like how women have still defeated him yeah despite him being good looking yeah it was that and then at one point he called me out where he's just like Told the whole audience to fuck. He goes, this guy's laugh is all that matters. Yeah. That laugh out loud. Like his, he goes, this guy gets me. Fuck all of y'all. I'm not worried about you guys. I'm just testing on him. Yeah. And I felt seen at that moment. But so I was what like, happened? yo. You hated Will Smith in Aladdin? <laughs> yeah. What happened? I didn't even see that one. Oh. We was, was that good? You I that didn't one? see that one, bro. <laughs> I didn't see that. Oh, God damn. Poor Will Smith. And that's Philly bias. Y'all want to pay Will some bills? Smith. Yes, let's pay some bills, bro. Let's pay some bills. What we got? <laughs> hey. Today's episode of Brilliant Idiots Man is brought to you by Policy Genius. If you have a family like I do, you already have plenty of things to worry about, okay? A good life insurance plan can give you extra peace of mind that your family will always be taken care of, man. I got four daughters. All I think about is their 
future. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Policy Genius helps you when it comes to your child's futures, okay? Policy Genius was built to modernize the life insurance industry. You know how many people I know that don't have life insurance? Huh? Their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from top companies like AIG and Prudential in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $17 per month for a half a million dollars of coverage. Can you imagine passing away and leaving your kids a half a million dollars? It's better than the nothing that you're going to leave them if you don't have no life insurance, okay? And Policy Genius has licensed agents who can help you find options that offer coverage in as little as a week and avoid unnecessary medical exams. They're not incentivized to recommend one insurer over another so you can trust their guidance. There are no added fees and your personal info is private. No wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net. You deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head to PolicyGenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. You need to get that life insurance, okay? Because the family you bless by getting life insurance will probably be your own. And I want to salute everybody who advertises with the show, man. NordVPN is one of those advertisers. Are you missing out on your favorite show because it's not available in your region? Huh? Trying to keep your private time private? Well, let me introduce you, NordVPN. If you're bored of U.S. Netflix, why not take it for a spin in the U.K.? Huh? You like Top Boy? There might be a lot of other shows like Top Boy on the U.K. Netflix. Using NordVPN in the click of a button, you can do just that. No need to travel to Japan for your favorite anime when NordVPN brings it right to you. With 5,000 plus server options, no show is out of your reach. They've also doubled down on keeping you safe with their new threat protection feature, okay? Say goodbye to intrusive website ads and malware. Even if you download an infected file, threat protection kicks in and deletes it before it makes a mess of your computer. It's the price of a cup of coffee every month, a small price to pay for premium cybersecurity and access to a vast amount of entertaining content from all over the world. Grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com slash brilliant idiots to get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan plus four months for free. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's N-O-R-D-B-P-N.com slash Brilliant Idiots for a discount of your Nord VPN plus four months for free. Now let's get back to the show. All right, we got church announcements, Schultz? Nah. I don't believe that. You got to stop saying you don't have no church announcements. You know what somebody reminded me of last week? They was like, What's yo, that? man, y'all got so many businesses, so many entities, so many things y'all doing. Stop saying that y'all don't do nothing. You know what it is? We move on from things that we create and assist with that we're not even thinking about it. But think about all the product you have in the ecosystem right now. Oh, I got a church announcement. Okay. Uh, I want to shout out uh, my brother, Kid Super, man. Kid Super is a brilliant designer, and now he is uh, designing uh, this year's uh, men's collection for Louis Vuitton, and he's going to have the uh, show in Paris. So this is like a true New York creative, absolutely brilliant dude. Wow. And uh, so now he's doing that. So he'll be doing that at Paris Fashion Week. So I want to wow. go out there and check that, but I'm super excited for him. That's a big achievement, man. Salute the kid, super man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Humble, you got how to be loved. Yes, sir. It's out. Yes, it's been a week. Yeah, epic. Yeah. Well, so humble, glad, that's, man. That's going. That's going to make him run out there and get it. <laughs> yeah. That, now is when you stop you know being what? humble. <laughs> you know what's funny? Stop somebody? being humble, humble. It's not. It's not. It's, it's funny. I don't know who it was, and I, I promise I don't know who it was. I don't remember the context of it, but somebody within the past two weeks said they discovered me on the brilliant idiots but the way they were saying it, it was like they were ashamed <laughs> wait why <laughs> wait why why, why? I don't, a lot of people's guilty pleasure i don't yeah i guess i'm i was like <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're like you know yeah i just you know just I have to admit it i like discovered you on like the brilliant idiots and i was like what's wrong with that what's wrong but, with like, that I guess, yeah, I guess they wanted to find me an NPR or something. This is the uh, perfect place. Listen, do you it is. we're the only people that accept that we are brilliant idiots. That's yeah. all this world is the full of. Yeah. Brilliant idiots. You know, that's it. Yeah. Or idiots who occasionally flash their brilliance. One of the two. Well, he said the gunshot thing, yeah. One of the two, baby. <laughs> so go get How to Be Loved. It's out right now. Um, You know, me, man, same thing. I, I'm, thank you to everybody who... uh. 
Yeah, know, what's your uh, your announcement? I mean, I, got a, I mean, I I thank you for everybody who you know continues to support the Black Effect Podcast Network. Mm-hmm. You know, Taylor, you was just on a uh, y'all weekly conference call, and you know, I I think last year we had like a quarter million downloads or something crazy like that. You know what I mean? So salute to everybody who's been listening to the Brilliant Idiots. I said the Brilliant Idiots. Thank you for everybody who's listening to Brilliant Idiots, but thank you to everybody who's just been checking out the podcast on the Black Effect Podcast Network. We got some... I think probably you meant quarter billion. What'd I say? Quarter million. Oh, yeah. Damn, you're right. A quarter billion. Yeah. Duh. (laughs) You're right. It was a quarter billion. You know, it was a quarter billion. So thank you. And, you know, we got some uh, podcasts that we're going to be announcing real soon. Um, same thing with Black Privilege Publishing. Thank you to everybody who supported. Oh, Tamika Mallory mm. and Anita Kopak, Shallow Waters. This is a church announcement because uh, this just went out. We're doing a Black Privilege book publishing conversation in Brooklyn. It's me, Tamika Mallory uh, and Anita, Anita Kopak in Brooklyn. Let me find the damn date. Uh, February 8th at 7 p.m. We'll be at the Brooklyn Library, uh, myself, Tamika Mallory, and Anita Kopax, Kopax to talk about uh, Black Privilege Publishing and, you know, how their books have influenced, you know, a lot of people's lives. So if you've got Anita Kopax, Shallow Waters, if you have uh, Tamika Mallory's um, State of Emergency, we will be out there. And I cannot wait to announce the other books that we have coming out. Um, Can you give Black us like Privilege a little Publishing. teaser? No, I can't. The only reason I don't want to do that is because it would be too obvious and I don't want to step on nobody's rollout. You know what I mean? Books are very special to people and I want people to be able to announce, you know, their work the way they want to. And then when they announce, I will be there supporting them a hundred percent. Okay. Yes. Okay. And, and, and make sure you check out the projects we got on SBH Productions on Audible, uh, Finding Tamika, which was the number one true crime uh, audio series last year for 2022 and check out some of 85 uh, by, by our guy, Chris Moreau. Okay. Okay. Now let's get back to the show. I did one of your. I did one of your shows. You did one of the shows. Yeah, I played like a contestant on a love show. Oh, of the SBH production. Oh, yeah, that's coming yeah. out. Unleashed with love. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, that's a, that, 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 that. That was a, when we announced the uh, SBH productions. We announced the slate of shows. So I could talk about that. Yeah, my 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 good sister Alicia Renee. You know, she's got a project uh, coming out called Unleashed with Love. It's it's, it's actually our first uh, audio scripted yeah. sitcom. Like the, the first two projects we put out were documentaries, you know what I mean? Finding Tamika and Summer of 85. But this is actually an audio scripted, you know, series. So it's a lot of really interesting people on that. Um, but yeah, Unleash, Alicia Renee, Unleash with Love. It'll be out this year. We don't have the exact date yet, but it'll definitely be out this this year. Damn, dope. Yeah. Um, so Humble, you said something interesting. You said you feel like you have to, you had to get out of Toronto yeah. No, L.A. Oh, no, well, Toronto. 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 No, because yeah. you, you said you were thinking about moving to New York. And I was like, why? You in Toronto? But I forgot you was in L.A. And I'm like, but Toronto's dope. I, I feel like Toronto's dope for inspiration. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like, it's such a dope ass city. But like the scale is not there. Like, you know, in terms of the population, in terms of the opportunities. So mm-hmm. it's like you have to leave and come to the States because it's just more opportunities, more challenges here. You think you're good at whatever you do. You come out here, you're going to find a thousand people better than you. So it's just a bigger, uh, a bigger pool of competition to make you step up your game. And then just access to, to, to money and funds is, is way bigger out here. So that's why I moved to L.A. to explore it over there. So all of these people that have been successful from Toronto that we've seen recently, you know, I'm going with it. The Drake's, yeah. The Weekends, the Justin Bieber's, they haven't created an infrastructure in Toronto? Um, I mean... A lot of them are in music, so I don't even know what the infrastructure would look like. Yeah. But I mean, I feel like the one thing Drake definitely has done is just like made room. Like you don't have to, you don't have to like be in his good graces to have a career in Toronto and music. Mm. You know, people can do a bunch of stuff and never cross paths with him and he's not going to get in the way. Yeah. I haven't, I've, I've seen a lot of independent artists do well that way. But it's like, yeah, he had to still, his success still came from the States and international. And now he's building something over there now. So I think, and that's a cool thing about it, because I think probably, you know, in 20 years, Toronto will probably be a world-class cultural city. Like 20? I feel like, yeah. Like, wow. but I mean, I mean, comparable to like a Paris in London and New York at that point. That's mm. crazy, because I look at, I look at Toronto with reverence. It is, but it's, it's just young. It's just yeah. a younger city and it's smaller. You're talking about like opportunities, financial opportunities. Yeah. Like I'm a best-selling games. author in, in, I'm a best-selling author in Toronto. And um, 
it would be like a lower middle class life, right? You're a best selling author here in America, and then like you're living good. Yeah. So it's like that. Talk yeah. to him, you know. So yeah. it's like, and again, even the country. Don't be humble about that, bro. <laughs> you're a New York sure. Times best selling author. Bro. Yeah, man. And then like, so from that standpoint, it's like understanding that. And it's like, there's only a handful of major cities right. in Canada. So you can only tour so much. You can only do so much. Um, yeah. And then like, you know, there's, as I said, I love the city though. And I, and my goal is to move back. Mm. My goal is to create, like I, I moved to LA because I got involved in like TV writing. Mm. The script that I'm writing is about Toronto. Mm. So I want to take that American budget and shoot and a show in there. Toronto. As you should. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm, I want to be, yeah, be near family, be, be in my city. Even for the winter? Yeah. I don't mind the winter. Really? Yeah. I'm doing ice baths, man. I don't, yeah, I don't mind the that, winter. Bro. That's you know what I realized, win. especially living in LA where every day is the exact same. That's I feel like, best. Uh, it's good for the joints it'll be good for your knees it's definitely it's good for the joints but i think just having diversity in weather and as i said having resilience yeah i feel like i'm getting i went i went to a birthday party and they had a heated pool and the heated pool was 88 fahrenheit i'm celsius i don't even know how much that is great people were complaining that it was too cold too too cold yeah nah they were saying it was too cold and i was like I was like, this water don't feel cold. Like, my yeah. nipples ain't hard. Like, what are you yeah. guys talking about? <laughs> yeah. And, but I realized that's what happens. You just get soft in LA. You just yeah. get soft. Yeah. You're just not used to weather. You're not used to anything uncomfortable. And it's like, really? This, the same weather. Well, people- I think it, it depends in LA because, you know, if you're not talking about the hood of LA, of course. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I can hear glasses from Lawrence hearing this right now and he's highly upset. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. And they even have colder weather more south in LA, I guess. You they know? would say you're talking about Hollywood. Yeah, and that's what and that's what it is. I shouldn't be yeah. saying Los Angeles. I should be saying Hollywood, and I shouldn't be talking about LA people. I should be talking about the industry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, yeah. that industry is like social media in real life. It's yeah, just very, yeah, it's yeah. all of that. But I think that's what I realized, and it's like also like I had a moment where like I was trying to go with some friends, and they canceled because it was too cold, and that whatever the temperature was, like my mom was bragging about how nice it is in Toronto, yeah. and it was colder. <laughs> so I was like, there's something about this four seasons, four seasons and the resilience. And even here, I've been like walking everywhere, yeah, and enjoying it and missing that and missing energy. Like, you can't walk around anywhere in LA, yeah. So and again, so the goal is I have to be in America because the scales here. So it's either LA or New York. I don't know anywhere else bigger than Toronto. That's what I could see myself missing in in LA would definitely be the interaction with the people, and even if I'm not talking to them, just seeing them mm-hmm. exist. And that's the beauty of New York is like you just walk in, you see people working, you see people going to work, coming from work. There's like a movement to the city. Right. And it's a really healthy thing. It pushes you. And I think when you live in a more suburban place, you just check out from work so much easier. Right. It's like I go to work and then when I'm home, I don't even got to think about home. And that's great for life. I imagine like it really allows you to create that separation between like work and play. And but it's not great for the grind because the grind is. There is no separation. Yeah. But what are we trying to do? You know, we're trying to settle down. We're trying to have a family. We're trying to focus on that. And play is really important. Yeah. But then also, it's like, as a creator, you need to, like, like have these conversations, be outside to have material. So I guess it is finding that balance. <laughs> do you think your industry is respected? And, and what I mean by that is when we talk about books, right? I think it's because we're, I'm, I'm 44, but I'm going to still say younger. Like, it seems like the book industry is still like a... A, a older medium like people respect it from they respect the judy blooms of the world and you know the people who have been doing it for a long time but when you say you're a new york times best-selling author or i say i'm a new york times best-selling author or i say i got a book in print do you think people give a fuck i mean i, I started with music and then what i realized was they're they're comparable like you have a hit song going tour you have a hit book going tour i feel like at least with books people who who, who mess with books they're, they're the quality of them and their relationship with you is better. Yeah. Someone can like you for it. I mean, people don't even like you for a hit song now. They like you for eight seconds of your hit song. Yeah. You know, whereas that's not happening with a book. Somebody read your book. Yeah. You guys have a meaningful connection. I've told yeah. people they don't like me, but they like my book. Yeah. <laughs> I've literally had people say, I never liked you. Yeah. On the yeah. radio, on podcast or nothing. But I love Black Privilege. Yeah. I love Shook One. It's a lot of time they're investing in you. Yeah. We're talking about. Hours, yeah. days, yeah. weeks, yeah, and it's, yeah. It, and it's not it's not fickle. It's not going to be as fickle. Where it's like, oh, I like the first book, and then I'm not going to give the second book a chance. Yeah, and it's slow. I, I think what I liked a lot about 
getting into this versus music and everything and even social media is like this is slow art like this is three years in the making and that's not considered long Mm -hmm. that's not considered a long like kendrick lamar five years between albums type situation so i like that and that's why i'm trying to get into tv because that's even slower i'm just trying to i just just want to do slow art versus this fast stuff it's like you got to make a song you got to make seven million clips to Mm, advertise the song everyone loves the song that's the only song they know and then you go, you go out and perform it, and then everyone only knows that song or yeah. eight seconds of that because they and they call it a sound. Yeah. And I feel like like that's heartbreaking if you bust your ass trying to make something and they yeah. they, they refer to it as a sound yeah. and they're using it and doing a stupid dance. Like all of that, I think is different. Versus like there are people on TikTok that just read quotes from my book. Yeah. And build a following off of my quotes. I don't care. Like yeah, the, the, the energy is there. Yeah. yeah. And and it's also just like it's still spreading goodness and you know. Yeah. By all means. So I think for me, I'm chasing that slower art because I'm trying to make a living off of this versus just choking my ego. Yo, hold up. That, yeah, I, I, I'm going to tell you why I love that because I never thought about that. Music really is for the moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you can go in the studio and literally write about, you know, what you went through that day. But if you're really trying to create like a body of work, like that's going to stand the test of time, you got to go live some life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In a real way. Yeah. I will say though, nothing impacts humans like music. It, do- it doesn't. It is yeah. the most powerful. And I say this to someone who makes comedy for a living. Someone who enjoys like toiling away, like you're saying, for yeah. like even putting together this next hour. It's just going to take time to put it in, yeah. grind, grind. And even when it's ready, to make it more ready. More ready. And I mm-hmm. like that process, but I see the way. Like I went to the Michael Jackson Broadway play and I saw just the way that not even Michael Jackson singing Michael Jackson affects you. And the audience yeah. and your eyes light up and you're watching fake Michael Jackson as if he's real Michael Jackson. And it's just, and then the, the, the first beat of the song comes on and then your brain is blasted with all these memories that you've had with the song and like yeah. how it affected you and the times and places where you've been. Like, I think that's slow art though. I think off the wall well, is slow art. I think thriller was slow art. I, th- I mean, I don't yeah. know how long I'm sure that you could look it up, but I'm sure Quincy Jones and Michael didn't go make that shit in a week. And people were also consuming it that way. Like, yeah. if I start today from scratch making music, the hustle is drop singles. Singles, right. singles, singles, yeah, singles, singles. Yeah. And now make 40 music videos for one single, right? Yeah. It's, not make, <laughs> it's not make something thin, cinematic and beautiful. Yeah. And the challenge with that is anybody who's making music today grew up off of the slower art. Yeah. You grew up, you know, where you listen to somebody's album and you heard album cuts and you heard, you know, skits and you heard a body of work which now is going to be extremely difficult for you to earn people. So, for example, like someone discovers you, they discover a clip of a joke, mm-hmm. and then that's enough for them to check a special. Yep. Right? Or it's enough for them to hate him forever and never even want to hear also, about Andrew Schultz. Also, yeah, also, also, also true. true. But in music, it does, like, in music, I think that's where it's at, where it's like the gap, that it moved so quickly to that where it's like you're selling these moments and they're monetizing these moments and mm-hmm. they're monetizing these sounds mm-hmm. and I think that's where it's, it's not there whereas again with the book like what I really because my first book I self-published mm. I was I was I wrote a book because I was trying to sell it as merch at my music shows mm. and I was like what's better than a t-shirt for 20 bucks so I wrote a, a t-shirt book, for 10 bucks a t-shirt for 10 <laughs> bucks <laughs> but I wrote, I wrote a book and I self-published it and sold it for 20 bucks at the shows until I did a show in Vancouver and, and I'm not lying, 100% of the audience was female and they were holding the book. And none of them even knew I made music and the only guys that were there were the dudes I came with. And and I was like, oh, because it's easier to to read a black and white text than it is to understand lyrics. Yeah. Because I was rapping about the same stuff I write. Yeah. And then it was like, okay, now instead of playing this hustle, and then I had two or three songs that like got a million streams and then again, you start to realize like you're dependent on this hit. When's your next hit? Yeah. Whereas with the book, is you build a trust with them. Mm-hmm. All I have to do is be more honest. I don't have to make it a hit. Or maybe you found your medium. I think I think my medium is putting words together. I think I I do have a dream for music still in the context. I think what I would want to do in the long run, um, and I'll put this out there now and try to live up to it, is like make ten minutes a year and like go on a DJ Clue or the LA Leakers and just do 10 minutes. Yeah. A Are you year. Yeah. I did not know you rapped, Humble. Yeah. I can rap. I can well, rap, rap. Well. The floor is yours. <laughs> <laughs> the floor is yours. Do you need to stand up? Yeah. You know? like, what do you need? You need a beat? So, again, Humble the Poet, the poet came from the idea. I used to battle rap. 
I thought so it was, came from me I shitting on MCs. Doing doing this. That's well, my rap sounds like spoken word, but okay. not like. But I, I can rap. I, I have. I have humble. I never knew you rap, bro. Yeah, you and can, I follow you. I've never known that. Yeah, you can look. You've look interviewed him multiple times. I never knew he rapped. Yeah, never. I like humble's brain. Humble's never. I've never even heard humble say this. Okay. And that's not true. Rap, that's, we, can, we can pull up some breakfast club interviews. I'm definitely you talking about rap. You made music, but I didn't think. I don't know why I didn't think. Yeah, rap. no. I never yeah. thought rap. And then I got into producing during the pandemic. I started making beats. But I have, I, I, and I work with really talented producers, like musical savant level dudes. And so I've been, yeah. I, so I still like I write verses almost every day. Okay, can we get some bars, bro? Humble. Or what? Time out. Can we get some Humble. bars, bro? Humble. I this is gonna be you. a safari moment. Right? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I it's love not gonna you. be. I don't no. want this to happen. Okay, let me. Take this <laughs> <out>. <laughs> I All right, let me get. Look, no, no, there's Humble. no shit. Here, Humble. here. Let me look, look, look. I'm gonna gas myself up even more, okay. and then I'll and I'll live up to it. Okay. I when I first first ever came to New York, I went to Sedgwick and Cedar Ave. I I love hip hop. I went to the place that hip hop was was born. Okay. okay. Well, Didn't know how to create hip hop. Yes, in the Bronx. I had no idea how to get there. I remember it was like a mission. Yeah. I get there and there's some dude sitting on a stoop and like a nerd. I walk up to these guys and I was like, hey, this is this is the building where hip hop started. Immediately like, fuck you. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, <laughs> that's the most New York shit. Yeah. Ever. That just means, uh, hi, you're welcome. That's yeah. all. <laughs> they did that to me when I went to the Joker stairs in the Bronx. Oh. <laughs> they did, bro. I'm, I'm just trying to relive this fucking movie moment. Yeah. Having these clown yeah, traumas. Yeah, bro. I see. That's why I'm fucking clowns, bro. That's why I'm fucking clowns. Bro. I'm fucking clowns bro. See, clowns always do me dirty, bro. Oh my okay, god. So go on, go on. So I'm like, yo, let me rap for you, and if it's shit, like, I'll, I'll fuck off. Yeah. And they caught me off after two bars, and then it was all love after that. Two bars. I didn't even finish a verse. And so that was back then when I sucked. It's fine. Two bars. No, and it, no I have. Can I have. I have let a, you get two. I, I have feel a video. so uncomfortable right now. <laughs> <laughs> so uncomfortable. This is. If you don't want to beat, let him go a cappella. You want to beat him. You want to do a cappella? I can just do it acapella. Yeah, let me do acapella. Uh, I don't even know what that was. You bought it. Alex put off his little shitty beat that he made it. <laughs> Alex, Alex made that here at WTF. Yo, <laughs> when nobody's here. When, 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 when nobody's here, he's in there making Sorry. beats. I tell you, he dressed like a hip-hop producer. Sorry, can I be great? <laughs> can I be great? <laughs> Doesn't he dress like a hip-hop producer? <laughs> God, God. All right. Okay, here's the thing. If I, the poet. Here's the thing. So let, let, if if I suck, just tell me I suck. Okay. And if if you like it, yeah. then please help me live out this dream of finding one place once a year that I could drop a freestyle. All right, you drop it right here. Right here. It's gonna okay. be a spot. <laughs> and I'll do it with a beat then. And I'm and I can just spend my year working on that ten minutes. Or all five right. minutes. Ten minutes is a lot. I'm not black thought. Um all right. Is there a theme to this? I'm gonna just do one about love. About love, okay. Someone look at him because he's gonna laugh. Let me get it out. I don't even know. I'm laughing at Andrew. You guys, I mean, you guys, I, I have music videos. I write and direct. You guys can watch my shit. Uh, uh, trust me. Come I know on, I don't. Shit. Since I, Shut up, man. Listen. <laughs> since, since I began, people, listen, this is this ain't nothing. I'm, I'm not even phased by this. P people right. are surprised I can speak English. You think I worry about people That's right. thinking I can't spit? That's right. Like, I would I not just disrespect call you hip hop. I'm sorry when this is over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go, humble. Yo. <laughs> Even though you thought you were my sunny day, you left me burnt and the tan line exists around the space where my heart is or was. You thought that because there was a dependency, we can call that shit love, but it wasn't. Love is something you don't know. And we too passionate to pass it up so fast forward. Skip the awkwardness, the mushy parts, the 143 at that moment when we realize the ship is going to sink, uh-oh. Funny now that I admit it, but another six or seven months had passed before we split, so oh, that's two seasons of bullshit, followed by the coldest winter, then healing bullets with butterfly wings came, saying stupid things, man, all up in my brain, now my fame gets to blame then? Yeah, I got a couple fans, but it's only me and you in this room arguing, we loathe loneliness so much. Love becomes something we lust. We were settling like the dust when one of us would grab the other's heart and beat it like they stole something, then give it back and act like we ain't even hold nothing. The truth is we just fucking scared. To die alone, but love don't help us die in pairs, so why the fear? Every new girl I meet makes me see a side of me that previously I never met. Amazing what was hiding here. And yeah, I cried some tears. Come out and wood and getting jerked up out my comfort zone wasn't pleasant. I couldn't bear a life lacking security or certainty. Now I'm addicted to adventure, a 180 certainly. And change is constant. I'm sure you're changing too. 
for the better. But what I'm saying is I can't change with you. It's getting old for sure. Always standing toe to toe, competing with our speeches. But for me to grow, I got to go. Okay. But don't look at me. You're the no, one. Okay, but that ain't that, right. Wait, that that sounds like poetry. Grew, what's rap? What's rap? What's rap? Rap is rhyming words. MC is communicating with rhymes. And what then I it? call myself humble the poet, saying I'm elevating it tonight. I, I grew up on Andre C Thousand. Yeah. Well, I can I can see that. You can put I can up. I, I have songs. I, I have like song songs with hooks and singing. No, the and con- all that. the lyrical content was there. It just sounded like a poem. Like I don't know why when I when somebody says they about to rap, I'm expecting like a. You want me to rap about guns? No, 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 no. It's just like a ca- it's bam, like bam, a, bam. it's like a cadence. Bam, bam, bam. Wait, what do you mean? You know when a rap when you hear a rap, you you, you the difference between hearing a rapper rap and hearing a poet spit poetry. That sounded that like That was definitely poetry. That was poetry. That was beautiful. No, I, I, it was I, I that, that goes on a beat. You put on a beat a rap. It sounds the same. It might just have a little bit more melody to it. Mm. Even though you thought you were my sunny day, you left me burnt in the tan line, exist around the space where my heart see? is a that, Oh, that's you thought that because that's what I mean. yeah, yeah, yeah. You see the difference? That's, that's the that. difference. Yeah, yeah, we needed that. that we needed that, difference. bro. We needed that. We needed that because I was listening to it and I, it was like, I was like, wow, this is beautiful. And I'm like, wow, do I relate to these experiences? Oh, am I finding new things about myself with each person that I date? Oh, yeah, I do, I do. Like, it was, yeah. it was really great. How you could do that, but I understand what Charles. I'll give saying. you an example. Everybody talks about the Safari freestyle. His delivery, this is not that. No, his delivery was there. It wasn't no content. Ah, uh, the content was there, but I didn't hear the rap delivery. But when you did what you did just now, I'm like, oh, okay. You needed you need beats, or you don't like the beats. I mean, I, I can do beats. I just didn't know what like what beat they'd pull up. You want to try it again with the rap cadence? Uh, just to see? I'm yeah. just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> you want to try it again with this the rap cadence? so hard, bro. Why like, is it hard? But I know, being in your position to be like the arbiter of, of rap, I, I, I could never do. I am not the arbiter of rap. I'm just saying, like, you know. I, listen, I read Humble's books. <laughs> yeah. If Humble wants to rap, I'm going to support him in that. I'm, you know what I mean? I'm, this, is, look, this is what happened. I started doing spoken word poetry in coffee shops to meet girls. That's how it all started. Yeah. Then one day I was in a room full of people and they said some shit about how kids are stupid and they don't listen. And I was used to be a school teacher. And I was like, kids aren't stupid. You don't know how to speak to them. So what I did was I took minority report from Jay-Z and I put it on the background and I tried to write a poem. And then I obviously snapped onto the beat. Mm -hmm. So then it sounded like a rap song. Mm -hmm. And I made the song and I didn't put my name on it. I didn't put my face on it. It had a lyrics video and I dropped that shit. It's like 2008. And then that shit in Toronto went viral. No one knew my face or anything. And then I don't even think I had my, I, had, I didn't even have Humble the Poet back then. And then I, and I recorded in some dude's basement against a mattress. And then they're like, yo, do you have a rap name? And I was like, I was, like, I was thinking Humble the Poet. They're like, that's a stupid rap name. And I was like, well, fuck you. I'm using it. So that's what it is. It ain't, not a stupid rap name. Well, that is sick. Back yeah. then, it was funny because some guys like, you know, social media, that's a long handle. And like, he was right. Yeah. But from yeah, that yeah, context, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. They were speaking, and I was just like out of spite. I was like, fuck y'all, I'm, I'm going to use this. And then, then somebody heard my voice at a wedding and they recognized it off the song. Because I was scared back then to put anything out. Since then, like I've released, like I have singles, I have music out, I have albums. Um, I, I'm, I have an album called Righteous and Ratchet. All right. Yeah. Can we hear one more? Everything's going to sound poetic right now. <laughs> what do you yeah. mean? Should we, should should we, we do a beat? Should we pr- bring that Minority Report beat up? Or should we just pull up something that's on YouTube? You can pull up something on YouTube. Pull up something on YouTube. Yo, why are you looking at me? That's the thing. I'm not We're doing a podcast. Don't look at me, bro. Hey, don't look at me, bro. I performed at Lollapalooza. For real? Yeah. Like, I'm not, as I said, like, I was, I was heavy on the music hustle. Then you start to realize, like, when I got, I didn't, the book happened by accident. And oh, then uh, nothing happens by accident. I'm well, I wrote the book. I self published it. It got picked up four years later. The book got picked up by a publishing company four years yeah. after you self published. Yeah, that was oh. that was an unlearned. Wasn't that it? was. Oh wow, wow, wow! I love one because what I, I did was I got a, I did an Apple commercial in Toronto where I did spoken word, and then that put me on the map. And then they looked me up, realized I had a book, and, and they're like, the, "Oh, let's get this." The yeah. bookstore, the actual bookstore Indigo, which is like the Barnes and Noble over here, they reached out and they licensed the book, and then I plugged it in the system. It became a bestseller. And then that's when I connected with Mark out here. And then he got me deals out here. Wow. I mean, I got, that's how I got introduced to Humble. Dude, yeah, though. so they still, even in the back, they still write rapper. But as I said, like, you know, I grew up, as I said, I grew up on like Outkast. I grew up on Andre 3000. That's yeah. why everything sounds poetic. Yeah. That's how he raps. Yeah. Andre got there. But no, you're right. Andre did get there a little later, though. 
like the, like that cadence, that kind of like yeah. slower flow where it's almost like he's just talking to yeah. you. That was more later Andre than, than early Andre. Oh, no. You yeah. got it out? Elevators was like that. What is this? It's a, new humble. New humble. Well, old humble. humble. What is this? Are you putting on beat? Just put on, put on one of the songs. Just put on something. Yeah, I want to hear one. Of, put on humble. Y'all are so crazy. They just went to chill, hot, hot music, That's and just pulled up a random ass beat. Yeah, that I'm not they a, want humble yeah, to rap over. I'm not. I'm not. That is why would you? I'm not Corday, man. I can't like go just go endless on a beat. What song you want? Tell them. Give them the song. Uh, humble. Dude, you have to spell it out for Taylor. I have a song called Hair. Humble the poet hair. Humble the poet hair. You know how to spell hair, Taylor? Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. How, how'd you spell hair? Taylor? Probably H A R E. You should probably put humble in the hair. <laughs> She's like, I learned that in elementary school. This is a, oh, this is a video for it, too. This is the song? Yeah. Throw a fool your city now, it feel like a beginning now. The rookie had a decade in the record, always spinning now. I'm rap. living out my yeah. every dream. I'm wide awake and never scheme. Go hit the mark like laser beam, and we won't stop his major things. Just throw him up. I said, throw him up. We grateful that you showing up. So pop that shit and blow it up. And I said, I'm a leg. I'm sussy calling what it do. A couple breakups, couple makeups. Now I wake up next to you. Hey. Hey. Right up to the summer yeah, I sing too 31st of February You were never coming But I love the February. way your hair feels Yeah, I love the way your hair feels I like you in July Love you in September Like the traffic in LA I thought this was forever But I love the way your hair feels I said love the way your hair feels Some kind of stalkerish <laughs> Sunset on the beach Sunrise from the hill Bare feet on the grass And that time we smash Outcast on deck And a tribe called Quest Don't a spinning on my mind And the always on my grind I love you love I think you got to lead with this, Humble. Like, he should have gave us this first. Yeah, yeah. I might edit the freestyle. Yeah. <laughs> wow. No, I'm serious. I'm like, like you got to lead shit. with this. No, but even this, like, this is not even lyrical. This right, is give, just, us the hard, give us the lyrical shit. Give the us hard, the hard shit. The hard song? This is a song called By Any Means Necessary. By Any Means Necessary, Taylor. There's a beautiful this is a By is spelled B-Y. <laughs> is that song hair based off a of true story? It was just based off a girl that annoyed the hell out of me. I love that was, press replay shit. Yeah. Because you're reliving those moments. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because it was, like, it was learning song structure. Yeah, that middle one. Lead yeah. with that, humble. Lead, next. So this beat, can, can you just pause for one second to tell you, like, this beat, this beat is uh, uh, Vogue. So this beat is Vogue. So this was like, like. Madonna? Yeah. So this beat was like, when we originally made the song, just like a fuck you to homophobia. Like, we, we rap, made a hard song on Vogue. Because Vogue music is associated, you know, with like Vogue dancing and all of that. So I was going to shoot a dope video for this, but then the pandemic hit. So there's some gay shit? <laughs> Just the beat. The beat. Yeah. No, but... The, 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 no, listen, man. The, the produ no, the, the producer's gay who made this beat. And like... Why are y'all laughing? He schooled me on this, but that was the thing. so much? I grew Why up laughing so much, bro. <laughs> Ain't that what he so just crazy. said? No, no, the producer that made this beat is gay. <laughs> Shout out to Sick Knowledge. He's dope. That's not what he said. He said it's a fuck you to homophobia. <laughs> it's a fuck you to homophobia beat. But he like the phobia part. It's it's rapping fuck over you to homophobia. It's rapping over Vogue, but making it sound hard. Is that what I just said? <laughs> fuck you to homophobia. Fuck you to homophobia. Homophobia. Exactly. The people who are homophobic. <laughs> so fuck you to them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but he said the producer's gay. Yeah, and he exactly. You the... Yeah, no, like he's he's I'm me like homophobic. He made... My producer's gay. <laughs> 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 You're right. Oh man, I walked into that. <laughs> come on, come oh, on. Come but on. the whole thing was like he's, he made me watch this this dope ass uh as, about New York. It's called uh, uh Burning in Paris, Midnight in Paris. What's that when they fall down? The dance. It's about like it's about like the eighties, yeah. But it's about like the eighties and the eighties and like how many of them get murdered and killed oh, well, oh, and all of that. that. 
but it was like just yeah about like that whole scene in the 80s and then yeah. he, i watched that and he was he educated me on what vogue music actually was and then we he made a vogue beat and we vogue rapped on fire. it madonna vogue was fire Let's this, hear is, it. this is real vogue that madonna shit wasn't real Ooh. Ready to get gay, bro. Yeah. Let's go. Bugget <laughs> <laughs> sing, Malcolm X, Dudley, Georgia, fuck your rep. Bugget sing, Malcolm X, Dudley, Georgia, fuck your rep. Bugget sing, Malcolm X, Dudley, Georgia, fuck your rep. Bugget sing, Malcolm X, Dudley, Georgia, fuck your rep. Bugget sing, Malcolm X, Dudley, Georgia, fuck your rep. Bugget sing, Malcolm X, Dudley, Georgia, fuck your rep. Bugget sing, Malcolm X. X, Dudley Georgia fucking rep Bugget sing Malcolm X Dudley Georgia fucking rep Big dick 12 inch Need a ruler slick Rick Poker in the I can't tell she's rocking now Third eyes blurry Everything that's new is scary So we hurry to wax hurry There's an app for that An app the fact of ditching God is You can't advocate for Lucifer You spitting knowledge But try living like a superstar Start a spotlight, gon' leave a dot on your head like Hindu bras. We rock mics, feed the spots on the regs, see the car. Bugget sing, Malcolm X, Dudley Georgia, fucking rep. Bugget sing, Malcolm X, Dudley Georgia. You gotta explain the name. Bugget sing, I, I, I need Malcolm to know why. X, Dudley Georgia, fucking yeah, rep. Bugget sing, Malcolm X, Dudley I Georgia, think fucking rep. <laughs> I'm so mad you spit that freestyle first, bro. <laughs> I am so upset. I'm like, it's fire, bro. That's what I'm saying. Why this ain't even that gay. <laughs> no, it's gay. <laughs> I didn't see that much gay things in it. He started off saying 12-inch dick. But that could be straight, too. But why why, why those... Why those I'm, I'm, I'm assuming I think I know, but why those three names? Okay, so Fuggis thing was uh, like... the. The dude, he was he was a revolutionary in India, mm -hmm. uh, fighting the British to get to get them out of India. He don't get the credit. The credit goes to Gandhi. Okay. So Gandhi was like the nonviolent, sitting whatever. Bugger Singh was doing the dirt, fighting, you know, right, doing right. all that, and he was executed. Okay. Um, y'all know Malcolm X's story, and then Dudley George. People don't notice Dudley George is a Canadian. He, he's a he's a native from Canada. He did a blockade um, over some. Uh, the, a corporation was taking over land and he built a blockade. And what happened was he had like a pickup truck and he had a stick in his hand. And the, the police in Ontario, like the like the Ontario uh, provincial police, they snipered him. They killed him. Wow. Yeah. And he was completely unarmed. Mm -hmm. So it was one of those. So I'm talking about like these three revolutionary individuals, but at the end of the day, they all ended up losing their life. Got you. So speaking like, like I, because I grew up in activism. I grew up I grew up with these types of heroes. Like the autobiography of Malcolm X was like the first thing that like changed my life, mm -hmm. getting into that Mumia, Abu Jamal, all of this. So I started the music spitting through the lens of activism mm. and, and everything was for that. And, uh, and I was doing that for forever. So it was just finding different ways to do it. So I was saying I rep these guys, but at the same time, they're all gone. What made you want, what made you pick up that cause? It's, it's kind of, from so this is this is much later in, in the journey. So this is much more like trying to abandon idea uh, idealisms, where it's like pick your battles. So like if we think, like right now, for example, like you have activism the way someone like Jay Z does it, which is like behind the scenes paying people's legal fees right. to fight cops or whatever. Right. Or then you have like, you know, someone who's out loud and saying stuff in public, like Kanye or something like that. And no, you see how, like a Tamika Mallory. Tamika Mallory. Real, and anybody? Oh yeah, any, yeah. Anybody? Say, well, she, or even old Kanye. <laughs> even old Kanye. You know, like George Bush don't care about black yeah, people. Yeah, type, yeah. You know, and there's always you, you're putting you're putting kind of a, a target on your head. So I'm like that spotlight gonna leave a dot on your head like Hindu bras. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm trying to be as ignorant and as smart. I'm I'm trying to be a brilliant idiot in that song. Yeah. So that's why the first line is big dick, twelve inch need a ruler, slick Rick. It's it's ignorant, but it's then you clever. Poke somebody in the eye because slick Rick has the eye patch. I know. Yeah, I caught so it. I'm trying to. So I'm Keep trying to with that big dick. Yeah, he didn't. poke him in the optical eye patch. Right, but I go third eye blurry. I'm talking about like that's what pokes you in yeah. the third eye. Yeah. So I'm trying to like do this like I think ratchet and righteous type situation. Um, but the goal is again, how do you speak to young people without sounding preachy? Where, 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 where? 
Right. No, I'm with you. Yeah, that was fire. Yeah. You notice I didn't ask none of these questions about that freestyle. I asked about these two songs. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and again, like, I, as I said, when it, I, I, I started with spoken word poetry, so everything for me comes from the poetic lens. And yeah. then when I do it, music is different. But like, as I said, so now, do we believe I can rap? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. The freestyle. This one, this one, this, this one, one has a whole bunch of other people it. on it. But like, wait, wait, I still rap on this. What do you say? <laughs> the freestyle was rap. It just didn't have the beat to make it. it you rap. wanted the energy. Yeah, you, yeah. you wanted the energy. The cadence. I think he wanted to I feel wanted like rap. it was rhyming. I, like I just wanted to prove yeah. that the lyrics didn't suck. But I get what you're saying. Yeah, this was, with those two songs, I'm like, all right, there's, I, I, I fuck with it. I can hear it. Okay. You know what I mean? And again, and then I started learning about like making, like I learned song structure or whatever. I'm letting you know right now. <laughs> so, so there's a, there's a song called "Love Love Don't Pay the Rent," and also that 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 song here that had no samples. This song has no samples either. Doesn't mean I'm working with guys that like figure this. When out. was this video made? This is maybe like five years ago. This is somebody else's track. You don't age humble, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I don't stress myself out. This is rap, rap. That's not you though. Who's that? No, this is this is a young kid out of Toronto. Uh, I think I don't even know if he raps anymore. If you ever knock me this was the producer asked me to jump on this joint. The producer, his name is Thick Kick. He's super talented. And then uh, he asked me to jump on this joint. Are you rapping? Or you just driving Uber? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you want you want to know why that joke actually? <laughs> Yo, <laughs> come on, dude. you acting crazy, Charlemagne. Charlemagne, why you acting crazy? Crazy, you acting oh crazy. Oh my god, man. you know what's so funny? I'm, I'm I'm working on a script right now, and the script has a lot of like racist banter in it. And yeah. all I thought to I don't myself, know if that was racist. Or no, accurate. you know how you know why I found it offensive? Okay, because I'm the son of a cab driver. Oh shit, and that's what killed. They killed, killed, killed his cabs. Injury. Yeah, so that offended me from that. Oh, level. They, what do you mean they killed? Oh, Uber shit. killed, Uber cab killed yeah. cabs, man. Hey, we got my dad out though. We got my dad out. Damn, bro. Yeah, so I wrap up. Yeah, that's ill. What you said, the whole because it was he 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 said it, he didn't take it offensive because he found it racist. Yeah, yeah. it's because the Uber it's just, took yeah. out your, 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 yeah. your dad's. Business. My dad still won't take Uber. Bro, yeah, there was yeah, there yeah. was cab drivers who committed suicide, bro. But I he... met I met the dude because I, I I watched it. He did a talk and he started talking about he was talking about New York and he started talking about it being a redundant business and all that. Mm. And I went the, the the old CEO and I went up to him and I was like, "Yo, that's my dad's pension, man." Like, yep. That that plate was my dad's pension. Yeah, the medallion. The medallion. Yeah. And my dad just got the medallion. Oof. And you guys you guys cut you guys cut it in thirds. Yeah. Why? More than that, it's useless now. Yeah. So there was no cab drivers that evolved with the times? Well, a lot and, like, of them started... did, but the ones that bought the medallion, because the medallions were limited, and they were going for half a million yeah. dollars. The medallion is the right to become a cab driver. What? So, so, so in, yeah, in yeah. New York, there's only 1,300 medallions. Oh, Which so only 1,300 legal taxis. And then they would split them up to do a night shift yeah. and day shift. And then Uber came out and made those medallions that were so lucrative that these dudes had put yeah. all their fucking life savings into. So if you want to drive into. cab, you got to find a medallion owner and pay him rent. Mm-hmm. To rent the medallion to drive the cab. Yeah. And I'm not saying it was a perfect situation. So what was happening was people owned the medallions for generations yeah. and they wasn't even driving cabs anymore. They were just renting them out to people. They were just renting them out. It was like a property. It was an asset. Yeah. Yo, but, that's a story. So they killed oh, the asset. Yeah. Massive. No, that there was, was a story. Think, I'm thinking about when people you, killed you, themselves, Charlotte. This yeah, is for real. Like yeah, they yeah, committed yeah, suicide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my dad in Toronto, they gave him a government medallion. So it was like, you don't pay rent, but this has no value. Then they sued and they got it to be where you can own it and sell it. And then Uber came in Oof. and the medallion was probably worth at its peak, maybe like 400 grand. And then by the time my dad got out, it had to get, get sold for like a hundred. Yeah. Cause we talk about the advancements in technology and how that makes the world better. But what about stories like this? So I wonder what other things that we think make the world better and more convenient that have actually hurt people. Amazon. Well, it's everything. Yeah. Good. What did <laughs> I'm at 100%. Yeah, they're just killing the mom and pop store. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, I think they also have a department that you can pitch your ideas to them and they just steal them. Bro, they wait. They look and see. I mean, like, I'm not. And we don't complain because it helps the consumer. So the idea with, like, breaking up monopolies was always it hurts the consumer. But Amazon is the type of monopoly where it helps the consumer, right? Because yeah. the products just keep being cheaper and more convenient to get to, or so, yeah. to us. But, like, they got all the data for what sells. So let's say you're selling backpacks at your store and the backpacks are going like crazy. What Amazon does is, oh, wow, people like those backpacks. All right, so we'll make the exact same backpack from the Amazon logo. and then Amazon we'll, Basic. Yeah, it's called Amazon Basics. And then we'll 
pitch it to the people that are looking for backpacks on our website. Wow. Yeah. But none of us wow. complain because imagine life without Amazon right now. Yeah. So the same thing with Uber. I'm thinking yeah. about that artificial intelligence shit that they talking about. Not artificial intelligence that's doing the work for people and writing GPT. books for them and people. Yeah. yeah. I, I use it. I, I've yeah. been doing it like where I take a picture of a quote in the book and I'll, I'll, I'll highlight the whole chapter of the book. And I'll put in chat GPT and be like, yo, summarize this in 2,000 characters. Wow. Because that's the Instagram caption. And then it'll just write me my caption based off my work. Get out of here. Tell me you can write one quote. (laughs) I know I'll do the opposite. I'll I'll, I'll highlight the whole chapter, which is like four pages. And I'll be like, summarize this in 2,000 characters. Because that's the the Instagram caption limit. Mm -hmm. And it'll summarize it. And then I'll be like, now re-summarize it for a five-year-old. And then it'll it'll take the big words out. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. What the fuck am I paying Chris for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta get it. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> you gotta get it. Chris is done. Chris is done. Chris. Chris is done. Yo, it's, the, it's, the, yo, it's just done. all about, yeah, Chris figuring out how to use it. Chris is done. But like, yo, it's, yeah, that, this stuff. Chris is done. You gotta, and I get that. Like, I understand this idea, like, you know, like, what do you say to the DVD maker when, when streaming comes out? Or what do you say to the, v, the VCR maker when the DVD comes out? I get it. It happens, right? And I think with my, even with my dad's situation, like I saw it happening. I'm like, you need to retire now. Like get out now. That's smart. Spell that cash. now. Yeah. yeah. He got out in 2015. Like get out now. So because it's only going to get yeah. worse. That's because that didn't, didn't Netflix try to sell the blockbuster or try oh, yeah. to yeah. start something shit like that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But and this is, this is, this is the tricky thing when like government, uh, government restricts certain industries to pr- protect the people that are in them. It's like those are very vulnerable if there's a business like Uber that's coming on that doesn't give a fuck about what the government says. So Uber basically came around and the government was like, we're going to fine you if you do it. And they were like, okay. Yeah, they built it in. <laughs> they they didn't give a in. fuck. They got yeah. fined. And they just bullied themselves into every city, no matter how much they would get fined. Yeah. I think like Vancouver, for example, they did a few has, rides. well, now, now they, they're not in Vancouver because Vancouver pushed Vancouver. them out. It was yeah. actually really funny because my boy Mark, you know, Mark, who opens for me on, on, on the road. Uh, one of the jokes he has about Uber and like the first thing he did, he went on stage and he was like, he's like, man, I took an Uber here and blah, blah, blah. He's getting to this joke and he doesn't realize that the crowd is like, you ain't take no goddamn yeah. Uber to the fucking show. Uber's not in Vancouver. Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit, so, Mark. So, so, See, Mark needed artificial intelligence to help him write that goddamn joke. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember it, it was in Edmonton when the government was pushing back. They're like, all right, cool. All rides are free. Yep. And then everyone's downloading the app and getting free rides everywhere in Edmonton. Wow. And they're absorbing the cost, but they're getting people used to it. Exactly. And the challenge Once with this too, like, there's a good John Oliver thing about uh, AT&T in the 70s, how they had a monopoly and the government actually got them to break it up. And that's the reason we have answering machines and the internet, commercial wow. internet. Mm. So it's like, we don't know what innovations are being suppressed right now with the, what pretty much the fangs, I guess. What is it? It's Facebook, Apple, uh, uh, Amazon, Google. Yeah. With those big companies, mm-hmm. we don't know. When it's restricted and there's suppressed. no competition, well, they're nothing changes. Well, they can't. It's yeah, too late yeah. now because it was um, it was supposed to be the last Congress. So yeah, apparently would have had the balls it's to just, do it. Yeah. You, you yeah. got to look at them like uh, utilities. Like that's electric. You got electric, you get water, and yeah. you get Facebook. It's actually un-American to break them up. Because you're a, a society that's a uh, free enterprise, right? Mm-hmm. You're a society that we 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 want you to be innovative, and we tell you if you can create great but sometimes ideas, sometimes en- 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 enterprise can restrict free. Yeah, because they're and paying that's the government. Idea with the monopolies, it's like yeah. if you own everything, then nobody else can compete with you, and if yeah. there's no competition, then you're not liberating them. You can actually restrict them. Like that's what Rockefeller did, I think, when it came to the to the the oil. He's like, I'm gonna buy all the refineries. I'm gonna buy the mid level, right? So there's like three tiers to what creates a. I think Monopoly, it's like, who's creating the goods, who's refining the goods, who's selling it? And he got the middle shit. So he's like, you want to sell some, you got to come to me. Mm-hmm. You want to refine your shit, you got to come to me. Mm-hmm. Now he had both of them by the ass. How you, I, I don't see how you can be mad at that. So here's, here's why you got to be mad at it, because Citizens United, because corporations have rights and corporations can lobby politicians without limit. So Amazon gives more money to the government than any other corporation. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now all these politicians work for them. Yeah. Right? So now if some new, if you're trying to start a company, and they already have all these politicians in their pocket. They're going to block you from doing yep. it. Yeah. Right. And they, they block you using different rules and laws and all of that stuff. Right. So now you have it. I think the good example is like uh, public transit. Public transit gets stopped in a lot of major cities because oil money pays the politicians to ban it. And they're like, no, these projects are going nowhere. This bus lane ain't going nowhere. Uh, adding more tracks to the subway goes nowhere. They want more highways. They don't want to do like. They want the, more highways. Yeah, they want yeah. more cars. Right. So that reduces. So, and that's the thing. I think if there wasn't money 
Because in Canada, we don't have that. We don't have corporate corporations can't give money. If they weren't in the pockets, if the politicians weren't in their pocket, it might be a little bit more fair, is what you. Because you you could argue that people can't compete with a corporation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then and then when you have them big, big, big corporations, they have everybody in their pocket. Like yeah. they donate equally to both sides. Both sides. So they just hedging yeah. their bets, right? Sometimes they got some heat. You know what I mean? I'm getting. That's why you gotta get that money up, Wait. um, fellas. Yo, yeah. I got, I got to run. Yeah, man. let's do. You wanna do one ask an idiot? We'll do one ask an idiot. Then we'll I got to run. Do one ask an idiot, man. We had a great conversation today, man. But dude, I like, I like the, I like the music, man. That's the first time I ever heard the music. Thank you. Yeah, the music. So, what, what, what do we feel style. about me trying to do free? No, huh? you, you, you're hitting on the freestyle still. I, I feel like oh, I didn't, I, I didn't come with the energy. That's all it was. That's all it was. The music is great. I think you wanted it to sit on the bar. Sometimes bar heads do that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Head, like, yeah. and it's like, you just want people to listen to them and not pay any attention to the music. But the music, the musicality is what drives us. You know what I'm saying? It's like, Completely. there's something outside of it. And all right, I'm working on five minutes. Five minutes. I want to hear the five minutes. I want to hear mu- more music. If you rap like that in these places you want to freestyle, you'll be fine. And if I, just do the written shit. You did yeah. written just now. You just. No, yeah, I'm only going to do I, Yeah, off the top stuff. Ain't gonna I got to run, fellas. All right, we got to be out. Listen, Humble the Poet, How to Be Loved is out right now. Uh, make sure you grab that. Always a pleasure talking to my guy, Humble, man. Um, Want to give me your Instagrams and Twitters, Humble? At Humble the Poet. And also, it's an audio. It's, it's an audio. Yes. I do a really good yes. job of having an audio because I am. You're a good an, talker. I'm a, I'm a recording artist. Exactly. So I love audio books. Yeah, the audio did really well. Uh, is doing really well and I think you know that's the future right. so get that doing and he's that, talking yeah. on the audio not freestyling he's <laughs> speaking <laughs> heater <laughs> as always if you listen to this oh, podcast you think we're smart everybody. you think we're intelligent you think we're brilliant you're absolutely right but if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit you're right too it's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast thank you for listening <laughs> <laughs>